you see me? Oh my god. I'm tiny. Bro, bro you this is hilarious. You look hilarious right now. Can I crop this? How do I make this look? Better? Oh my god, you look so funny. Ethan Klein 219. This is what room is this in your house? What is happening? I had to move upstairs because there's some some shit going on in the basement. So I'm in this depressing bomb shelter esque. Yeah. So first of all, thank you. Um, how are you? I'm all right. How about you? Um, you're you you donated to the to the uh, Palestinian uh, relief fund as well. And, uh, you know, we got, we got a notice from Anera. They're talking to all the other organizations as well, but we got a notice from Anera that like, uh, some of those funds have already, uh, made its way into, um, uh, you know, medical supplies and food in Gaza. So that's, that's great. That is awesome. That, I, yeah. I was, I've been listening to your stream for like an hour and I, you know, I like you, you know, I got a lot of shit from Israelis for donating because they're like, oh, it's just going to go to Hamas. But, you know, <laughs> I don't really, I don't, you know, I looked into the charity you picked and it is really highly rated. So I, I'm like, there, yeah, I don't no, really I, think this is going to Hamas. There's no way. You can't, um, well, the, I mean, the they logistics, just steal the, shit, but it's just food and medical supplies. Yeah. The logistics of it is like also impossible. Uh, like, the thing is, you can't even make donations like through uh, to Palestinian charities uh, to, through like PayPal. Usually, like it's already a very complicated process, um, and it's not just like uh, just for Palestinians in general. The similar the similar structure exists for even like Pakistan, which is like a client state, right? Um, if you were to try to utilize, if you had like anyone that you know that lives in in Pakistan and you wanted to give them money, you would not be able to do so. Like, it's very, really shitty. Yeah, and I mean, what choice do you have? The pe They need help. So it's like, yeah. you just exactly. pick the best option and hope that it gets there. But I'm glad it is getting there. Yeah. Um, um, but, yeah, these are, these are also authorized. To... These are also authorized charities by the Israeli government, too. Like, you can't fucking oh, operate. Oh, that's great. There you go. Yeah. That's even better. You, can't, you can't operate in, inside of uh, Gaza without, uh, you know, obviously Israel allowing you to operate inside of Gaza. By the way, dude, I got a fucking Air Force ad on your stream, like three of them. Yeah, um, they, crazy. they pump that shit pretty hard, which I feel like is so funny because I think it's because it's like this is politics. So they think like, oh, yeah, people will love this, but it's the least susceptible audience that you could possibly give Air Force ads to. Definitely. That's, I mean, that is true. I just thought it was pretty outrageous, but you're right. I don't think they're converting anyone in your audience. Yeah. I, there's um, a Marine Corps, too. So basically, I wanted to talk about specifically the one state versus two state solution. Mm -hmm. And my approach to this when talking about it is purely pragmatic and I'm trying to be realistic. I think our goals are aligned in that we want peace, a lasting peace, a meaningful peace. I know it seems like impossibly far away, but I do think there are certain starting points that we need to come from uh, and agree on before you know expanding out from there and one of them is this issue i understand that you are a one state you believe you don't believe in a two-state solution i'm assuming i used to be i i used yeah. to believe in a two-state solution i was an advocate for a two-state solution and i think like uh there are a lot of other people who also used to be two-state solutioners themselves that have changed their perspective uh, dramatically over the course of the past couple of decades. Um, yeah, due to the settlements uh, and the yeah. rapid expansion of settlements. I think uh, Avi Schlame is like uh, a, a, another person that I can immediately call. Uh, he is a uh, Iraqi Jew, uh, famous uh, Israeli scholar, part of the New Historians. Um, he's talked about this before as well. By the way, when you talk to someone, I can't see you, and the stream is delayed. How do you usually do this if you're calling in? Oh, I mean, it, it's fine if I can't see you. It'd yeah, be better, though. Usually, I just don't. The reason why I don't show myself is usually because I, I screen share with whoever I'm on with stream. Because, like, like, we'll look at, like, Ben Shapiro videos or whatever. Oh, okay. so it doesn't really that's, matter. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So, um, first of all, I guess I'll say this. 
when talking about the two-state solution, I'll agree that there cannot be a meaningful negotiation here without like basically fully dismantling the settlements. And I would even be in favor of offering some kind of, you know, restitution to, uh, to the Palestinians that were evicted. That's a yeah. big ask, obviously. But yeah. I do believe that that is the right thing to do in, in, in this, in this uh, agreement. So let's just, we can start from there, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, reparations is like, well, reparations is not only uh, a, a uh, like moral right in this situation. I think it also is like logical to do specifically so that, uh, yeah, so that there is like less tension and it's a, it's a more viable solution. And last but not least, reparations in this, uh, in this process is also a matter of international law. I guess the only thing that is up for contention is that um, the Israeli position on the matter is, you know, we'll just hold off on negotiations as best as possible while we do settlements. But also simultaneously uh, is, is the notion that, like, actually other Arab states should be giving reparations to the Palestinians as well like we shouldn't be bearing the the burden of the reparations because it's their fault because like their position is that the nakba didn't happen and that uh you know there was no ethnic displacement and that palestinians voluntarily that? left this is the israeli government's uh broad position oh, obviously yeah. there's well, varying obvi degrees yeah obviously we would need a completely different cabinet as well because oh, yeah, the one right now is i mean I believe that uh, Netanyahu and his cabinet are, you know, one side of the same coin uh, with Hamas. They're both obstructionists and violent fucking lunatics. So starting with all that established, my, my question to you is this, and again, approaching this from a fully realistic perspective, what do you think would happen in the region that would result in Israel conceding to a one state solution. Oh. That's a great that's a great question. I think one of the greatest things that could happen in a one state solution is that you completely limit obviously we're talking about like a hypothetical future that is like very far away, but you completely limit Iran's power and exertion of influence over uh militant factions that are uh that are being currently used as a destabilizing force against Israel. Um, the other states are not all that important, with the except the only reason why I talk about Iran is because Iran is the only regional actor that is like genuinely anti-Israel. Um, they see Israel as an expression of of uh, Western influence in the region, and uh, and and of course they will use like they have Hezbollah, uh, another uh, Iranian-backed uh, movement. That became a political party as well uh, as a consequence of like Israeli incursion in Lebanon as well and the civil war. And uh, these are all these are all opportunities for Iran to push back uh, by way of Syria, by way of Iraq, by way of Lebanon, by way of the Houthis in Yemen that uh, they would have they would be they would not be able to utilize these uh, militant factions if uh, there was a permanent peace solution. So I guess I'll 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 ask the question again because I I'm not sure if that if it was answered directly. But what do you think could happen in the in the region that would result in a one state solution? I think that the normalization agreements would continue with the Gulf nation states, and okay. that um, Iran's influence over militant factions within uh, Palestinian forces would wither away because there would be no necessity for their continued. Uh, uh, violent emancipatory efforts and so you're, you're saying that continued normalization of relationship between Israel and neighboring countries yeah that that was already because a lot of the neighboring countries are already like they're they're basically American client states to begin with Egypt being a great example of this like they are the Egyptian economy would not exist without America's like tremendous amount of, uh, of help like we give Israel a lot of money we talk about that all the time but we give Egypt even more money than that, right? Like, right. Um, so Egypt is a great example of this. The UAE and Saudi Arabia, again, regional actors that have their own personal interests in the matter, but like they're not 
they're not interested in, in defending Palestinians by any means, regardless. They are absolutely uh, America's solid allies in the region, too. So most of those countries are, are, are pretty much designed uh, in a way, like if we're talking about Jordan, directly designed uh, with, uh, with European influence. Again, another country that's like a holdover state, basically. Um, these, are, these are all countries that will go along with the... Uh, these are all countries that will go along with whatever America's interests are, as long as America can reinforce its hegemonic uh, power in the region... Uh, and and uh, genuinely is interested in in developing a new relationship with other regional powers. So, I I do question the. What's I What's do, your concern? Let me ask that because I I think well, that my, that would be better. To understand I mean, that. with like Syria, Lebanon, Iran, I I believe that this idea that there would be full acceptance of the of arab countries of the existence of israel is is pretty idealistic do you know what i mean oh you you think you're saying that you're worried that lebanon and and syria and other regional actors that are backed by iran yemen being another one um the houthis well, would like, not accept an Israeli state if uh, Palestinians were absorbed into it and would be a singular state with, with Palestinians getting, like, democratic... Uh, but it's not that. It's, it's, there would need to be some meaningful and, I mean, something we've never seen happen in that region ever before Israel would say, okay, we're going to dissolve our state. Because, that, that again, you have to... M my concern is that people that say they want a one state are basically, you know, in a non-starter conversation. It's a, it, it, it's, it's unproductive almost. I, I find it so unlikely to happen. So, well, like the the other the other issue is like so. Can first I can I can I cut in here real quick before yeah, you, we move on from that? So, um, there already is a one state. Like the way I see it, the the actual legitimate reason as to why I don't believe in a two state solution any longer is because there is a one state, right? And that one state is an apartheid state. It's a constant Israeli occupation in the West Bank and constant control over Gaza as well, um, which has been a demonstrable failure for Israeli security, obviously. Uh, you and I agree on that. But my, my solution basically, when I say I want a one state, is, is it, first and foremost a moral one because I do want the end to the apartheid so that uh, Palestinians can have, uh, you know, recognition it can continue a life of dignity have autonomy and and participate in a secular democratic process but um but the the alternative is the way i see it is like is it a one state that is an apartheid or is it a one state that doesn't uh have an apartheid and you're so saying it there, could still be the state of israel i don't care what it's called i i have no interest in uh in in discussing that i care more about like human beings that that live there i guess you know it's like this idea that of israel normalizing relations with all of their neighbors is just like when can that ever happen because if we're going to have a conversation like right now about you know the best path forward to peace for both groups that just doesn't seem like and then here's a here's another aspect is that it if you were to basically remove the uh all the checkpoints and, and walls and barriers and blockades and all that stuff. Do you, and again, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just coming at it from a very pragmatic perspective. Do you think there would be more or less violence against Israelis? What do you, wait, I'm sorry. In, in, a, in a one state solution, do you think there's more or less violence against Israelis? Is that what you said? Yes. Um, I mean, that's that's not exactly what I said, but it's close I think enough. In, I think in the stream of things, uh, it would be less. Um, where am I coming from this? Why am I saying this? Well, because there are good examples of an apartheid state obviously no longer existing uh, when we look at uh, South Africa, as a matter of fact. Um, but also, on top of that, one thing I want to go back to, you said like Israel's allies or Israel's like regional uh, enemies are, uh, are uh, you know, they constitute a threat. Right. Well, they still currently constitute a threat. Uh, a one state solution just eliminates like one internal faction that is an ever present danger. Uh, and you're, you're, you're telling me 
if we were to lift the blockade and the, uh, the wall around Gaza today, there wouldn't be more violence against Israelis? I 1,000% look to what has happened in the past throughout history in similar formations where there was like a lot of things that we consider to be completely morally unjustifiable. Um, that, that restoration process often will lead, it almost always has historically led to less violence than the violence of the maintenance of this process. Because you're asking like I, violence I against Israelis... How. I don't know how useful it is to compare it to like other situations because it, it, it does have a lot of unique things. For example, I mean, the government in charge of Gaza, Hamas, is uh, singularly um, dedicated to uh, destroying Israel and killing Israelis. So, so how, how, I just don't understand how you can say that removing the wall would result in less violence. Because Hamas itself, because Hamas itself is is a mere expression, and and simply one militant faction amongst the sea of Palestinians, five million of them living under uh, the occupation, under the apartheid regime. Hamas. Not, I know there's, I know there's a ton of peaceful Palestinians, the vast majority, but there's also a lot of Hamas. Yeah, no, so I, if you're an I, Israeli, I if you're an Israeli. And you see someone saying, we need a one state. That's the only solution. They're think the, the Israelis are going to see, okay, we're going to remove our walls. We're going to remove our checkpoints. And it's going to be suicide bombs in our cafes and buses again within the matter of uh, days. Well, with the walls and checkpoints, October 7th still happened, right? So it's more of a, it's more of a matter of like, uh, it's more of a matter of, of, whether the ceasefires have uh, worked successfully. And usually the ceasefire process is, uh, even though it is led by Hamas on the Palestinian front, uh, is still relatively successful. That's one thing. But I do think that comparing this to other historical uh, events is important because, I mean, chattel slavery was, was truly uh, a, a continued form of, of unimaginable, untold amounts of, of genocidal struggle. Uh, where, you know, African people were ripped away from their homes. You know the stories. Uh, I don't need to, you know, tell you about that. But then in the reconstruction process, there was a similar fear. A similar fear that uh, what if uh, black people that were now newly freed would turn what? around and treat white people in the same way that we had historically treated them? No so such thing actually occurred in that process. I and as a matter of fact, the real violence that came after that was conducted by the KKK, uh, a desperate attempt to restore the racial hierarchy, the racial pecking order in the South was established by the militant factions. I know there were isolated incidents of, um, you know, slave revolts where they kind of took over the plantation and killed the master and stuff. But I mean, like Nat I, Turner, has there ever been a organized uh, group of black terrorists that were, you know, uh, launching attacks on basically i mean civilian i guess whatever yes. but i mean not okay who when um well i just gave you one example but then also um specifically in, in apartheid south africa the anc uh in the beginning of the 60s under nelson mandela decided to um decided to take up violent means because they had tried and exhausted all peaceful options of civil disobedience originally they chose to uh, originally, they chose to oppose the apartheid by engaging in mass actions and and trying to get mass arrests to to cripple and dismantle the the carceral system in South Africa. So that didn't work. Thousands were arrested. Then uh, there was another riot where uh, police opened up live fire and killed sixty nine uh, uh, black protesters against the apartheid from the ANC. And then after that, there was a shift into uh, more militant resistance against the apartheid and uh, the the violence from the ANC, just like the violence from the IRA in the Troubles, was uh, not only, it wasn't directly against military positions. I was asking about American positions. slavery. But the, but the truth is I'm not super, I've been learning a lot about Israel-Palestine and I don't know as much about like a South Africa apartheid. So let's just stay on, I guess, focused on the... Because I, I just, to, to be frank, I don't know what you're citing, so it's, it's not helping me much. 
Well, the but, reason why uh, I'm signing that is because you said like, is there a way, and I'm giving you historic examples that aren't that far off, um, whether it be the reconstruction period, but that is too far off. If you don't want to think about that, um, ANC's actions and activities that made that put Nelson Mandela on the terrorist watch list until 2008 uh, were were against civilian populations as well. They they engaged in. Okay, in so listen, I'll, I, I'll concede that it's possible as a result of what happened in apartheid in South Africa, but um, in Israel, as it is now, I don't think you could convince a single Israeli that removing the blockade and borders checkpoints wouldn't result in immediate violence against them and that's why it, that's why i believe it's a non-starter i don't think you'll ever ever convince israel to to basically dissolve their state and remake it as one state i just don't think israel would ever do that ever like ever uh, i don't disagree with you it would you. never happen beside the only way that would happen is beside force which is why I ask in the yeah. beginning, what could lead to Israel willingly dissolving its country and creating a one and agreeing to create a one state uh, part uh, country, short of just annihilating massive amounts of Israelis in a in an all out war? I don't see any other way to do it. No, um, I think that. Uh, no, the way to do that would, the enforcement mechanism would be international pressure, but most importantly, the number one, most important party at play here, the United States of America. Now, the reason why I talked about the ANC or South African apartheid is because Israel and South Africa were allies, uh, in that same time frame, And, um, and they, they relied on one another quite, uh, effectively, uh, during the cold war as well. And also, I personally believe that Israel saw what happened during the South African apartheid and, and vowed not to repeat those mistakes in order to continue being uh, a, a ethno state, a, a Jewish ethno state, and maintain an apartheid structure in occupied territories. So that's the reason why I think it's important to draw this parallel. And it's also important because that's how international pressure worked in that situation. It's a, it's a very successful and very recent example of an apartheid regime ending with international pressure, specifically with was, American sanctions. What's up? You, you think with international pressure, Israel would dissolve their country and create a one state? With international pressure, Israel would do anything that, uh, not even international pressure, but just American pressure, Israel would do anything that oh, America I think wants. it's important for you to understand that will never happen. And I say this not from a right or wrong perspective. I'm just saying this from pragmatically. I know Israelis. I've lived in Israel. That, that will never, ever, ever happen, short of all-out war. They will never give up the country, ever. It will never happen. It's zero percent chance. No, I, I, I understand that. I, I, I know that there isn't a willingness. It, like, here's the, here's the counter. Here's the counter from South Africa. You could say, in South Africa, the white population was only 10%, Right. And even then, the majority, uh, after long and continued pressure campaigns from the international community, actually moved in the direction of ending the apartheid themselves. So that is actually a, a, a valid, that is actually a, a, a way to, uh, to counter what I'm saying right now, right? You can just say, well, in South Africa, even the majority white population was on board with ending the apartheid. Uh, for one reason or another, whereas in Israel, there's currently no appetite for this at there's whatsoever. 70, it is 73% Jews in greater Israel. So there's a ton of um, Palestinians, you know, in West Bank and Gaza and, and neighboring countries. Yes. But um, Jew, it, it is largely a Jewish state by, by quite a margin, which makes it, in my opinion, uncomparable. It's not apples, you know, it's not apples to apples with, with apartheid South Africa. What do you mean by that? Well, as you said, the white population was 10%, right? Oh, yeah. The white population was much smaller. And uh, this is what Noam Chomsky refers to as like uh, Israel's uh, labor problems being, uh, being fixed in the aftermath of the first intifada. Uh, Israel relied on, uh, obviously, the Arab population to do the labor uh, in many cases, like cheaper labor. And uh, after the first intifada was fought with strikes and, you know, stone throwing and the like, um, 
Israel moved in in a different direction. That's why there's like a new population of a, of a labor force that, that is often imported in, whether it's Sudanese refugees or whether it's, uh, you know, Thai workers um, that are able to work uh, like a cheap labor force. I feel like that you're not, feel like you're not uh, understanding or uh, not understanding. I don't mean to say in a condescending way i don't mean like that i just mean like you're not you're not engaging with this idea that israel will never give up its state short of all out war and violence it's not about israel giving up its state it's about israel dissolving the apartheid structure and allowing palestinians to to also be a part of its democratic process so then that's what and i, I go do back understand to. that there is an appetite I, I i do understand that there is no appetite in israel whatsoever uh, from the 73% Jewish population especially, uh, in doing such a thing. I, I totally get that. Um, there's two considerations here, or three actually. One is the moral one. I think you and I both agree that that, is, like, that would be a good thing, right? Ending the apartheid would be a good thing. The That's second consideration is, the, is a matter of international law. And the last one is, is, is uh, obviously what this would look like in practice. So when I talk about the the morality of the situation, I think you and I are both, uh, you and I are both in agreement. But when we're talking about it in a in a practical application, you have concerns, but concerns that revolve around Israel not wanting to do this and fighting against it tooth and nail. Right? It will never. They will literally. Yeah. It, it just. It will never happen. I completely understand what you're saying. I agree that as it stands currently that the Israeli government would refuse to do this. Uh, the Israeli population well, would not yeah, be people, receptive. Everybody. Yeah, the Israeli population would not be receptive yeah. to it. Ultimately, it still, uh, it still doesn't change the reality that this would be an ethno state, and there's pressure campaigns that could work from the international community that could sway like, like the what? Israeli... I don't, I don't think... Dude, you can, it doesn't matter was, whatever sanctions you can dream of you're not going to convince Israel to dissolve their borders. You know, you have to like, and again, I'm not justifying, I'm not defending anyone. I'm only speaking pragmatically about where do we start talking about this conversation of peace. Okay. You know, another thing you have to understand is that a ton of the uh, Israeli population are people who escaped the Holocaust and when they came down there, they bring generations of paranoia and, you know, persecution. And so there is, I believe, a widespread belief held by nearly every Israeli that if the borders would dissolve, if the borders would come down, there would be a massive genocide against Jews. And, and that, they believe that. And, and, I, don't, and I don't know necessarily um, to what extent that might be true, but... I can tell you for sure that that's what they hear when they think one state is basically a bunch of, of Israelis being massacred. Um, that's, that's what they hear. That's what they see. And that's why it will never happen. Okay. So the paranoia that people have, or, or Holocaust survivors have especially, is, is it, I guess, important for the practical application of the matter. But... I'll give you an example of like the government moving in a direction that the people actually don't want the government to move in at the behest of the United States. So, um, or even sometimes moving in the direction that people don't, uh, uh, people don't want it to move in, uh, but then still engaging in it. Like the rapid settlement expansion is something that is often contentious and has been very contentious throughout time government doesn't really factor into considerations like what the broader liberal Israeli society thinks about the matter. They just keep building the fucking settlements and populating these areas, right? And the opposite has happened as well. In a time when, uh, according to the Israeli Democratic Institute polling, uh, I believe like what, 80% of the Israeli Jewish population believes that there's no need to consider Palestinian lives in the, in the last siege in Gaza. Um, the the government has, has taken steps that uh, some people would find uh, to be inappropriate in opening up humanitarian corridors so that you can bring in supplies. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant was asked a question in, uh, in, in the aftermath of the first day of the Rafah border opening so that they could bring in trucks and trucks of supplies into Gaza. They were asked, why are you doing this? 
to which Yoav Gallant responded with, what can I do? America told me I have to do this. In 2021, Joe Biden called up Netanyahu. What's up? Letting letting humanitarian aid through Rafa crossing, comparing that to dissolving your your sovereign border. Come on. No, of course. It's not it's not a one to one comparison at all. I'm simply stating that something as minor as that something as minor as that, all the way to all the way to to uh, uh, ending a, a siege is entirely up to uh, the United States and, and what the United States is, is letting Israel do and allowing it to do. What could the United, what pressure could the United States exert over Israel that would be so powerful that they would say, we have to, we have to dissolve our country? First of all, I don't believe that this would be a, a, a dissolvement of Israel as a nation state. It would simply... It would simply allow the Palestinians that are currently under occupation to be also a part of the democratic process. And it also would not happen overnight either. But if you're asking me the question, it's sanctions. It's the like shutting what? off the money faucet. It's shutting off bombs. I mean, we were just looking at it. You said you were watching the, the stream earlier, so you probably saw this already. But like we're we shipped uh, two different, uh, uh, I think, mobile. We shipped two different mobile Iron Dome uh, trucks into Israel we uh we are consistently shipping in uh mark 84 rockets into israel so that they can directly use this on the offensive by the way like this is not even a defensive uh weapon that they have this is specifically so they can engage in offensive posturing in in the gaza strip so um without america's involvement israel would not be able to to uh behave in the ways uh, that it has so far america could just as easily tomorrow with one phone call, turn on, uh, call Bibi Netanyahu and say, enough, cut it out, you're done. Joe Biden has done this in 2021. Uh, even Ronald Reagan has done this in the past. George W. Bush has done this, or George H.W. Bush, sorry. So um, we have a lot more say on what Israel gets to do than vice versa. So your um, statement is that if America stops selling Israel bombs and arms, then not just they that. will... They will, um, I say dissolve the country because, again, that's how the people in Israel are going to view this. Mm-hmm. Um, it won't be the same place, you know, for them. And, and to them, their security is paramount. We're not selling the weapons, rather. we're just giving them weapons. Okay, so, so, but, but, so you don't think that Israel could get bombs from other places? Um, is- certainly, but Israel is our ally, and Israel is... Israel relies a tremendous amount on U.S. aid, right, um, to the tune of $4 billion, but also Israel engages in a lot of trade. For example, in 2013, Israel was offering uh, weapon schematics, uh, U.S. weapons, to China. America stopped that, right? So, like, Israel does have global partnerships, but many of those global partnerships are still almost entirely managed by the United States. So... The way I see Israel is not necessarily like an independent nation state, but simply like an American state, a very important state too, like not like fucking Montana, like an actual American state that Americans care about, you know, more like, uh, more like New York. <laughs> we love, we love the people from Montana. We kid them, but we love them. <laughs> but so for that reason, America has complete control over Israel's uh, trade relationships. Obviously there's like, um, there are obviously times when, um, you know, some Israeli actions will over leverage or overextend itself that like Americans will get mad at, but ultimately they're still fine with it. Like Pegasus. Are you familiar yeah, with I mean, Pegasus? They, is? Yeah, of course. It, and, and Israel, and I'm sure there's lots of other countries that would happily love to use that in exchange for any fucking thing that Israel wanted. If there was yeah. to be a, 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 their ties to be severed. Yeah, so like America has has been very critical of of the uh, Pegasus software, right? Like because it's so invasive, uh, the surveillance technology, and yet America also uses Pegasus. So like it's more so, it's almost always this like, hey guys, don't do that, and like finger wagging publicly while simultaneously, you know, helping uh, Israel so, uh, continue think, doing whatever it's doing because it, it's, uh, it's America's beneficial to influence us. over Israel is great, but I think it's absolute. I mean, 
Israel was fighting to defend itself before America gave a fuck about the region. So I don't see, I, I just, I genuinely think that it will never happen. Even if America was like, I'm cutting your aid, this relationship is over unless you open the borders and create this new state. It would, I think, it would I think be, before, no, before it America, it was happen. the British. Before America, I think it was the British. And no, there after were... the British were gone, you know, after the Palestinian mandate, and the British said, fuck this, I don't want to deal with this shit. The Jews were fighting to defend their, themselves and their, their new uh, place in that area from the very beginning with no help from anybody. That's not, I mean, that's not true. They were, they were uh, shipping in weapons. Um, even under British occupation, they were still shipping in weapons illicitly. This is after British occupation. I'm talking about like but 19, also, 1948. But also, who, who was supporting Israel in 1948? So... The Haganah, Irgun, and Lehi brigades that were at that point almost always considered like a standing army um, uh, during the Nakba were fighting against predominantly <clears throat> villagers with like uh, that were that had been disarmed by the British. The Zionist brigades at that point, even before uh, England pulled out, uh, even before the British pulled out, were being trained by the British forces. Uh, while the other side was being disarmed by the British forces. That's why there was, a dis there was an asymmetry to the violence even then. Uh, over the course of, uh, over the, course of the, the years, but specifically during the Nakba as well, 6,000 Israelis died, whereas 15,000 Arabs died, with 750,000 Arabs being uh, Palestinians uh, being expelled from their homes. The reason for why this happened wasn't because, you know, you had rugged fighters or whatever, I mean, they were great fighters too, but it was also because it was a broadly civilian population that was being slaughtered and by a militia force that was trained, had weapons, had even a plane, had armored uh, personnel carriers, whatever it looked like back then, and, uh, and had much better weapons as well. So, I mean, listen, uh, what... This stuff is just not comparable. I mean, if you look at the United States during 1948, there was an arms embargo during the time. Um, yeah, and they, they, it, it, they sent in illicit weapons into Israel regardless. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, they got it from France, and they got it from many other areas. Can you um, provide a source on that? Because that's yeah. not how I understand it went down. Okay. I yeah, understand I that they got source. some help and weapons from, like, Czechoslovakia was selling them rifles and shit selling it to them, you know what I mean? There wasn't yeah. a lot of countries that were willing to sell them anything, but Czechoslovakia. But, but you, was you, yeah, there was, a, there was an arms embargo, which meant that they were, uh, they were acquiring illicit weapons. Yes, this is true, um, from many different, uh, many different countries. However, beyond that, they also had access to British arms as well. That's why they had like armored personnel carriers, tanks, uh, not not many, but ultimately you were fighting against a civilian population that was almost completely disarmed regardless. I mean, the Egyptian army was considered one of the best at the time of that war. Well, not necessarily, it seems. But Why? Because they lost? But they were. I mean, they were considered one of the best armies in the world, which is why the war was so thought to be like oh this is going to be an easy dub for the arab uh country i don't i don't think that they were uh, i i do not think that they were a a uh like a really good standing army at all i think that uh the, what? the overarching I, I don't know if you're talking about 1948 or if you're talking about 1968 i'm talking about 1948 war okay there was no i i think there is a little bit of confusion with what you're saying because what you're describing sounds like uh, 1967 because in 1948, like the Egyptian army uh, that you're referencing in, in 1948 is not like is not like a like a serious one. Um, no, no 1948. I think Egypt was considered like a military power, especially in the region, um, and and a, and a fairly well trained army. But I think we're we're kind of. To go back to the original point, so we, I don't want to drift too far off topic here, is that Israel, if it has to, will definitely go its own way before, before, it, before it dissolve its borders. Like, I'm just, I need, I, I, I hope, 
I really want people to understand how impossible, how, how that will never, ever, ever happen. And again, not defending them. I'm not, I'm not justifying anything. I'm just speaking pragmatically. You have a people who are coming from this systemic genocide, coming and getting their own borders here, right or wrong. Again, just being pragmatic. They have a massive, well-trained standing, uh, standing army of the whole country. They have nuclear bombs. They're fucking crazy, dude. They will, n and they, they do believe that dissolving the borders would be, would be a second genocide. They believe that. All of them. Almost all of them, I'd say. And yeah. so you have, to, you have to reckon with this, uh, with this uh, reality that with the one state I, I, I do possible with no, from I, I understand it and that's why I said it's not going to happen overnight it's not like all right everybody like is a one state now like that's not how this works right um uh, but a a international commitment in the exact opposite direction has to happen and it has not happened thus far like, well then even i mean a good question even then is like do you ever even think that's possible before we can even get to the idea that uh you know, we need to exert pressure on Israel from foreign, foreign, foreign forces. I think that um, there's a reason why there is a steady flow of propaganda into the Western world that the Israel Foreign Ministry cares about a lot because they want to maintain a posture uh, uh, that is, is, you know, broadly supported by the Western world. And I think that that dam has been breaking since 2021 once, like, that Salem, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch also all officially declared Israel to be an apartheid state. In my opinion, it was, you know, decades late. Uh, but, but yes, uh, over time, as the brutality of this regime continues to get worse and worse, more and more people will, in my opinion, uh, uh, keep continuously protesting Israel's actions and will push for more uh, push, push to uh, get Western leadership uh, to to pull support away, and ultimately even move in the for, uh, in the direction of sanctions. This kind, what of, kind of timeline are we are we thinking here? I'm not Think entirely. I, I I don't know. I don't know what how long this will take, but I I won't stop fighting I for it. Doesn't go on that long, you know. It sounds like that's a really long plan. Well, there's not really. I mean. The inverse of this is also a really long plan, and the really long plan revolves around Israel continuing to, like, slowly but surely engage in pogroms in the West Bank, turn a blind eye to it, or directly arm the settlers like Itamar ben gavir has been doing, and, and continue to push uh, Palestinians in the West Bank uh, further and further away with the ultimate goal of, like, you know, maintaining an ethnic cleansing and ethnic displacement campaign in parts of Gaza, maybe even annex further and further, because, like, everybody fully understands that there's no way to like eradicate a not just Hamas but just like a, a a means of violent resistance against an apartheid right so if it's not Hamas then it's Hamas too right Hamas in and of itself was not a real entity that was uh, even remotely popular in its formation moving away from uh, moving away from a charity group an Islamic charity group that like literally was getting funding from Israel as well to an actual militant group so, uh, in 1988 to one that was to one that switched over to start using suicide bombs on civilian targets uh, in the aftermath of 1994. The uh, one thing the I learned Intifada. about Hamas, because it's, it's easy to look at Israel and look at all the obstructionists to peace. I mean, Rabin, I think it was Rabin that was executed, right? By a yes, fucking psychotic. Like uh, and they were so close. They were so close to peace. Um, but Hamas actually rose to prominence in opposition to the PLO peace talks. That is why That's a great... they came out is literally to derail the peace talks. So and they went out a, and you're right. You're absolutely they right. Went out, hold on, they went out and they started suicide bombing cafes and buses on a weekly basis, a daily basis. And, um, and they were successful, frankly. So, so Hamas from their inception has their singular goal is to not have peace, but to basically, there's no compromise for them. There, it's only, it's only 
kill everybody there, remove them all. You know what I mean? So let me explain this to you. This is actually, we are very close to, to having the exact same understanding of the situation. So the reason why I brought up Hamas and its founding charter in 1988, which is like expel all the Jews, like kill all the Jews or whatever the fuck they said, like the, the radical violent shit that they said in their uh, founding charter is because Hamas, out of all of the militant factions that some were violently resisting against the Israeli occupation, some of which were actually interested in a peaceful solution, like the one that you just mentioned uh, with Yitzhak Rabin, the PLO, Yasser Arafat, the official recognition that, uh, you know, that there was uh, peace negotiations that would finally feature Palestinian voices at the table, um, changed a lot of Palestinians' minds on the issue. So Oslo in and of itself was already a non-starter agreement, in my opinion. A lot of Palestinians felt like that was fucked up. Uh, like the conditions that were offered in Oslo were, were uh, completely inconsiderate to the needs and demands that Palestinians were making. However, mm. the two-state solution in that time frame, going from Oslo to Camp David, um, is directly responsible for Hamas gaining more prominence amongst the Palestinian population, never really being anywhere near close to the level of popularity that Yasser Arafat enjoyed in the first elections that happened, which was an 83% governing mandate, unimaginable popularity, which to me signals that the Palestinians were always on board with, uh, with believing that Israel would offer them a favorable negotiation. And yet time and time again, every single Israeli government, every single negotiations committee utilized the two-state solution, dangling it like a carrot, simultaneously offering uh, very little, uh, simultaneously offering very little to the Palestinians, uh, having red lines that were considered non-starters for uh, Israel, like Israel's own demographic concerns, while maintaining a, a uh, while simultaneously expanding rapidly and partitioning off different parts of the West Bank, which was occupied territory. So from the minds of the, from the eyes of the Palestinians, they saw this as uh, yet another instance where okay well we're trying to negotiate with israel yasser arafat is trying to negotiate with israel and yet they're not giving us anything they keep pushing us they keep blocking and pushing and using this as a as a uh, as a means to continuously build settlements and and continue pushing out palestinians in the west bank and that's precisely what happened over the course over this over this decade multiple decades long process so uh, I do not fault Palestinians for, for looking at the situation and thinking, well, what the fuck are we supposed to do? Another turning point was obviously um, the Israel pulling out of Lebanon. This was another pivotal moment um, where, where a lot of Palestinians were like, okay, well, Hezbollah violently resisted Israeli occupation and Israel, and that occupation became too costly for Israel, so they had to pull out. Meanwhile, on the other hand, we are still occupied and our leaders are trying to work with Israel and the leaders that are trying to work with Israel have been given weapons, have been given training, and then they use that, those weapons and that training to maintain some semblance of civil governance, but that civil governance isn't actually real civil governance. It's simply being uh, used against Palestinians. So that is the reason why uh, Yasser Arafat's influence waned over the course of this multiple decades long process where everyone saw him as an incredibly corrupt figure by the end of it and, and were looking for any other option that, that would possibly offer them uh, real emancipation, real results. The goal for both Hamas and any other violent movement has never been to like, you know, wipe out every uh, Jewish person around the world or whatever. And it's always to make this occupation as costly as possible. This does not mean that they're good guys. I would not say that. I do not agree with uh, Hamas. I think that their actions were very brutal, especially on October 7th. Okay. Um, but having said all of that, the goal always is for them to make this occupation as costly as possible so that Israel cannot maintain it. Right. But again, I'm not, again, without drawing uh, conclusions about who's right and who's wrong. Broadly, I agree 
with the Palestinians, I think it's worth saying, uh, in terms of them being fucked over, obviously the hardest, um, and, and being the most entitled to uh, peace and reparations and lands and stuff. But again, I just, um, I really, so, okay, okay, let's go back. So Hamas was created in opposition. You say the peace talks back then were, was, was, wasn't even realistic. So yeah. this is during the most magnanimous time in Israel's history where everybody thought peace was possible and even the beloved uh, prime minister who was considered a dove, was this was the offer. And so, again, not good enough. However, well, yeah. There's, well, however, also, the dove, also however, the dove himself was like on, still, on, on. you know, however, he was... Okay. However, looking at now... You, I'm just, I'm just being real. Like you have to see how impossible it is. You, I, it's just a non-starter. It's just a non-starter with Israel. It will just never, ever, ever happen. And another question I have to ask you, I guess, going along is like, do you think a lasting peace is possible when, while Hamas is in power? I think that in order for Hamas to actually be dealt with appropriately, and for it to no longer exist. The, the major goal of Hamas needs to be eviscerated, which is uh, a, a secular democratic republic would completely destroy any kind of uh, legitimate need for violent emancipation. It's over at that point. There's no, like, without so the apartheid, there's no reason saying, for any of this to exist. You're saying if they, if they lift the blockade, Hamas will just dissolve. Hamas in and of itself is already not a very popular entity. Uh, both in Gaza, but I guess ironically a little bit more popular in the West Bank as uh, uh, as as years have, have passed by. The only group that is less popular than Hamas in the eyes of Palestinians, however, is the Palestinian Authority. To me, this is Israel's arrogance. The way that uh, the way that the Israeli governments under Netanyahu and under even more uh, peaceful, supposedly more dovish uh, leadership, like even Ehud Barak. The Palestinian Authority has always been used as a part of the Israeli security apparatus. The Palestinian Authority collaborates with the Israeli government. They actually give up uh, resistance members. They literally give up random Palestinians to the Israeli government so they can be unlawfully detained. This, of course, has created in the minds of Palestinians a, a uh, anger towards like the one group that is supposed to be collaborating with Israel. Israel had every opportunity throughout this time frame to show that the secular Fatah party was actually not simply a cutout uh, that is, uh, is simply there to oppress Palestinians, but with a Palestinian face, but instead like offered genuine security assurances, genuine security commitments, and a good faith uh, interest in like not continuously expanding in the West Bank. But they didn't do that. They did the exact opposite, dangling the two-state solution as a carrot while simultaneously continuing on with their expansive policies in the West Bank. I don't believe you answered the question. Do you think a lasting peace is possible while Hamas is in power? Hamas will not be in power if there is lasting peace. That's my point. Okay. So you're saying, well, no, no, no. The lasting peace doesn't come first. First, you have to deal with Hamas. You cannot deal with Hamas by bombing uh, Gaza. You can only deal with it in a political, it's a political problem. So Hamas is... But because, how do you do politics with a terrorist group like Hamas? Well, Israel has done politics with Hamas many times over. There has been ceasefires in between uh, time and time again. So that's not even a, like, even if we're, even if we're having this conversation, well, doing uh, Israel a itself has been is, able to. First of all, agreeing to a humanitarian ceasefire. No, 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 not even a, not, I'm not talking about like a humanitarian pause. I'm talking like ceasefires in between different sieges that have occurred into Gaza. Okay. A ceasefire is, is different from having a peace partner. Right. A ceasefire is different than having a peace partner, but that is one form of negotiations, is what I mean. Okay, and so also, there, not only that... It's such a big difference. You can't... I don't think it's fair to say that um, Hamas okay. I mean, would be a more, good partner in more, peace with Israel. Do you think Hamas would be a good partner in peace with Israel? No, I do not. I do okay. not believe that Hamas would be a good peace partner with Israel. I also do not believe Israel is a good peace partner for Palestinians in general. I think that that is sure, the we most agree. important. We part agree. We so, agree. So, but here's again, the thing. Like, but here's is... the thing. 
Hamas My in piece itself. is just to just again to draw it back to that is that the one state solution will never happen and starting from there is a non-starter. That's that's my thesis. But go ahead, go ahead about Hamas. Okay. So here is here is what is important to understand. And this is not just my assessment, this is the assessment of the likes of Norm Finkelstein as well. And sure. and it's backed by actual sentiment expressed by uh, Likud party members, but of course Benjamin Netanyahu too. Hamas is, and its existence as a violent Islamist fundamentalist cutout greatly benefits thwarting any kind of Palestinian nation-state project. This is not my design. This is the design of the Israeli government. This is something that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has openly mentioned time and time again as well. Last time around in 2019, where he said, if you want to thwart a Palestinian nation-statehood, what you must do is only govern against Hamas. Because everyone sees them as terrorists. Everyone sees them as violent Islamist fundamentalist terrorists. And we can always deal with Hamas because we control how high the flames go. Who who else is there to talk to? There are plenty of there. First of all, there are actual leaders within the Palestinian movement that you could prop up like the Palestinian Authority, instead of utilizing Fatah as... That's what uh, they, well, as, that's what they want to do, but like, I mean... No, they don't want to do that either. They want to, they, they, I think the goal is to remove Hamas and install the, the Palestinian Authority, but... Yes, but the Palestinian I Authority is the, deeply unpopular and is seen as a the puppet God, of the Israeli the government. will not accept the PLO because they'll, be, they'll look like stooges to the Israeli government. Yes, because they are. They are the stooges so of the Israeli who, government. So then who, who, who is leading these... So if, if the wall is lifted up, uh-huh. so who, who, who's, who's in charge? Is it Hamas? Is it the PLO? How, how is this happening? At, the, how, what? at this stage, before the walls are lifted up or anything, what needs to happen is a ceasefire, okay? So that there can be an actual continued negotiation to release the hostages, right? That's number one. First and foremost, hostages need to be released. So first you need to do a ceasefire. Then you need to do a, a, a prisoner swap, a hostage release for uh, uh, the, the... I think you're, uh, you're starting too far are... back. Let's okay. just go to the point where, okay. you know what I mean? And then beyond doing... that, beyond that, yeah. what needs to happen is, just like it happened in 2006, which was genuinely disastrous, even though it was a Bush-backed uh, election, elections need to take place. So that and Palestinians need to get security assurances from the state of Israel. Israel has to show good faith for the first time in uh, since its inception, so that Palestinians can have a normal political process and be able to actually vote for uh, for a group of individuals that would lead them in civil governance without worrying, uh, without uh, you know becoming a militant faction. In this process, I do not believe that it would be Hamas that wins out. Um, most Palestinians do not consider Hamas to be good at civil governance in general. They are not as popular as, as Israel makes it seem they are. They're simply the only option the Palestinians seemingly have in retaliating violently against Israel in times when Israel violates the ceasefire protocols by doing a steady maintenance of the apartheid uh, structure that it, it maintains. Anytime Sheikh Jarrah is raided, anytime uh, Al-Aqsa is raided every year, anytime there's a uh, flag day protest that occurs in Jerusalem, like these are all incredibly violent expressions of the, the apartheid regime deliberately turning around and, and stoking the fires in the West Bank against people that have no legal recourse, against people that are led under military mandate. I, I agree with everything you're saying. And but to go back is, to the to to go back to the original point, don't you think it's more likely? Like, I think this is infinitely more likely, even though it's very difficult, especially now. But to remove all the settlements, just fuck all of them off, those scumbag freaks. Give it back to the Palestinians, and you can do the security assurances and the negotiations and all of that, while Palestine has its own sovereign. Uh, country that's can and and like I think in the original I, idea I there was even going to be a, there was going to be that, a tr- that's more violent than a one state like you think Israel would would be able to successfully take out 
471,000 uh, settlers living in the West Bank and you also another 300,000, almost 300,000 more uh, plus living in, in East Jerusalem as well, which is occupied, but now also permanently under Israeli rule. Look, be, do, like you, the, do you think that integrating, fully integrating the populations would be less violent? Yes. I don't. I do. I just, Dude, there's no way. Like, all it takes is one thing. We've seen this time and time again in the history of this region. Like, it just takes one thing of, like, a bunch of psychotic uh, Jewish fundamentalists going and doing horrible fucking acts. And then the Palestinians respond by doing a, a, a horrific acts. And then you got to all out. It, like, it takes so little to create all out war. I agree. So little, dude. I, so little. I agree, which is why there needs to be uh, an international presence and a steady uh, and and um, steady pressure to ensure that uh, that there is political pressure applied on specifically the Israeli side to to ensure that there is a lasting peace process. This has happened time and time again. It happened in the dissolution of the apartheid state. It happened with the Good Friday Agreement uh, it, it, that ended the troubles, and it will. It always will happen because I believe that no matter how much we fight, I think peaceful solutions are our natural state. We want to fucking coexist with one another. And the example I always use is when you look at Europe, right, which is a borderless utopia now, like the EU, the European Union, there's freedom of movement. Those guys have fought one another since the cousin fucker days for far longer than they've actually peacefully coexisted with one another. And now it seems impossible to think of a time when these guys uh, would, would, you know, kill one another for 100 years, right? I mean, World War II happened not that long ago. The Holocaust happened not that long ago. And now when you think about it, Germany can peacefully coexist with all of the other surrounding countries. So oh, is that the timeline we're on, like 100 years or something? It would, it would take multiple decades, but it's not like, I mean, it, it happened almost instantaneously after World War II. I mean, it, when, you look at, when you look at like civil governance in Germany, it was almost instant. You mean after a horrific world war where like tens of millions of people died and countries were forever changed and traumatized, then they were able to create a lasting peace? Yes. And that and does so, not have so that does not need to happen. Okay. No, I'm saying so even what, in a situation like that, you can the find parallel peace. To the Middle East? Even in a situation like that where millions died, right? Millions, tens of millions died, you can still find lasting peace almost overnight. And that what is precisely I'm saying, that's bro, precisely what I'm, what I'm saying is that it, the, that's precisely what I'm saying. It's it's perfectly reasonable <clears throat> to assume it's perfectly reasonable to assume as long as there is international pressure. And that um, that that uh, there is is accountability and control and a and a again a uh, a committee designed specifically to dish out punishments for war criminals on both sides according to the uh, international criminal court when there's a truth and reconciliation committee in a similar capacity to the aftermath of World War II and there's reparations afforded and a right to return to Palestinians. There will be no need for violence. This has happened in the past, and it can happen again. It seems unlikely because we're very conditioned to thinking like, oh, what is going on right in front of my eyes is exactly how things have been in my lifetime, and it can never change. Except it absolutely has changed, and it absolutely can change, and it will change. I and that. that's why I use other historic examples like, like I mentioned, you know, Ireland. Or, or the ANC and, and apartheid South Africa. These happen in our look, lifetime. If you look at peace in Europe, I think this was possible from rising from the ashes of a ruined continent where unspeakable horrors that people didn't even think were possible occurred, capped off with a nuclear bomb. Uh, and by the way, Europe, the characterization of Europe as a utopia is interesting. But I, I want to say this. You I, saying I, sanction, I, sanctions against America... Or sanctions against Israel, you think would would influence Israel to drop their borders? How have sanctions against Russia been going? That's a gr thank you for saying that. Russia is a foreign adversary that has always positioned itself with the full knowledge 
that support from America uh, or support or a trade relationship with America is always on uh, a, an uneven footing, right? So Russia as an economic power has never had to rely on uh, America being able to uh, meddle in their affairs in any meaningful capacity. Sanctions against our enemies, our foreign adversaries, oftentimes do not work. As a matter of fact, it, it, it's a means to galvanize um, the existing regime and its brutality. It doesn't work against Iran. It doesn't work against Israel Russia. Israel can forge the same alliances. No, you think can't. China and Russia and North Korea and whoever the fuck else gives a fuck? You know what I mean? No, it can't. I, I don't it I don't can. think so. It can and it would. I I I don't I don't think so. Okay. Especially then, because then like just... the quality look at the quality of life in like a North Korea, for example. If you're permanently isolated from the rest of the Western world, right? Um it's just it's not something that uh uh Israelis that are uh that are used to like a a, a relatively comfortable existence especially like one that uh, with such close association to the Western world would ever be uh, on board with. Dude, Israel is extremely resourceful. They've proven that from the, their inception. There is no, there's no way they will ever, ever drop the border of their sovereignty. It just will, it will never, ever, ever happen. I understand well, everything you're saying. And, and I think what you're saying is, is interesting about like, you know, potentially over a long span of time, strengthening diplomatic ties with the with the neighboring countries and stuff i guess it's possible you know in like 50 or 60 years that the landscape could be so vastly different than it is now that maybe if i were to be there and see it then i could be like okay maybe maybe this can work but as as of right now looking at the situation i can tell you as someone who's lived in israel as someone who knows tons of israelis it will never happen the Jews, they said, they came, out of, they came out of Europe and they said, never again. I know a lot of people find it ironic because of what they're doing to Palestinians. I'm not defending them, but they believe that. They went to Israel and they, they, hold on, and they said, never again. And they fucking made nuclear bombs and they made a big ass army and they fucking believe that shit. Trust me on that. It, uh, do you know what I mean? I, yeah, no, I, I, I do trust you. I, I hear it. I see it. I know. Um, you cannot maintain a a uh, apartheid regime without like a steady flow of of constantly reinforcing that uh, through propaganda. Steady flow of propaganda is a necessity. That's precisely the reason why a lot of these positions are learned and and reaffirmed time and time again. Um, and and I I completely understand that. Do you think I'm just simply stating that like that perspective that perspective can be dealt with. Uh, through uh, the things that I just mentioned, the Truth and Reconciliation Committee, uh, uh, an honest effort in in uh, international pressure and international support, where it's a where it's an absolute necessity, um, because the the other side of this process will be uh, assuming that the Palestinians will be quietly ethnically cleansed without like the inter the international community uh, refusing to see that. Uh, in the same way that like Western leadership thinks that they can just suppress it as best as they can. This spells a lot of trouble and destabilization for Israel more than anything else. Like uh, every single time uh, Israel increases the pressure. Um, it, it, every single time Israel has increased the pressure, it has, uh, it has led to more commotion, more chaos, and more devastation for Israel. October 7th is a direct consequence of that. You can never maintain an apartheid state forever. It just doesn't Again, happen. I want to emphasize, I'm not, I'm not moralizing anything I'm talking about. I'm just from pragmatics. Because, like, I don't know, if you... In, in 1981, America was giving Israel almost 10% of its economy. Mm -hmm. Okay? In 2020, the current aid they're getting is about four billion. Is that right? Uh, it's more than that, but I mean, just the I should say, say the military aid alone is four billion. Yes. Okay, that's one percent of their economy. Yeah, that's that's one percent of the economy is massive, especially when you're thinking Not about enough for them to fucking remove just to remove their borders. 
It, not even close. No, 1% of the economy is huge, Ethan. So 1% Think about it this way. Enough. Think about it this way. Okay. The UAW strike was supposed to... The UAW strike on the big three was slated to eat away at, uh, I think, like, what, 5%? of the, the all of the the states like that would have been devastating it would cause economic collapse and sanctions don't mean just like the direct aid Sh sanctions don't mean like direct uh sanctions don't necessarily uh just mean like all the weapons that we're giving uh to uh to israel it also means like stopping companies from working with uh, uh with israel as well like this is how so sanctions I, operate I feel like you know in a sense Israel's become, they really, with the amount of tech and like inventions and IP shit they have, I feel like it would be really hard for a lot of companies to sever those ties. And Pegasus is just one good example of it. Yeah, um, I, I understand what you're saying, but it absolutely can happen. Um, so it's 1% just... is enough to convince Israel yeah. who is afraid that they'll be genocided. No, one percent is one percent is just the weapons, the amount of weapons that we're giving, because it would be significantly okay, more damaging to their let's GDP. Let's Here, this is a good this is a good take. Yeah, Polygon Primitive says the two thousand eight collapse was a four percent GDP contraction. So like that was a two that led to the two thousand eight collapse. One percent is simply just the weapons that we're giving, like the Iron Dome and things of that nature, like the Tamir interceptor missiles and stuff. So beyond that there's it would be oh, uh, so far worse than that, but also before we even talk about like Israel's economy with American contributions, according to the Financial Times, Israel's economy is slated to collapse already. Uh, I think Standard & Poor's warned Israel even before uh, the, the bombing campaign started that if they were to try to maintain a steady occupation of Gaza, that their, that, uh, their credit rating would change dramatically because 300,000 reservists and all of these Merkava tanks and all of the rockets that Israel is utilizing, no matter how much America gives them support, is obviously not a uh, is obviously going to have a long lasting uh, and damaging impact on the Israeli economy. So, even without like like Israel's economy at this moment is already in a, a troublesome situation, even without boycotts and even without sanctions, well, just simply on its own. So I don't sure. think that it's as uh, I, I don't think that the situation is as Again, you have to acknowledge that to Israelis, the dissolution of its border is literally the the genocide of them. They they will all die. That's how they feel. So, whatever percentage you think matters, if it's one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> I I I cannot emphasize how fucking little it will matter to Israel ultimately if the question is dissolve your borders. It will never happen ever. They think if they do that, they will all die. That's the, that's the perception in Israel. That's what I, they think. And you cannot convince them otherwise. You can't. No, you can. And you can. I, I think you can, especially you because, Israel? like I mentioned. Ha, have um, you been to Israel? No, I have not, Ethan. But I'm not talking about. Do you know what the, do you, do you know what the Israeli perspective is? Uh, I, I, do, I do. I do talk to uh, my yeah. Israeli and, counterparts. I've, I've talked to uh, Ofer Kasif. I've talked. I talked to. Yeah, have you lived through. Um, Daily suicide bombs in cafes and uh, bus stops. Or As a matter of fact, I have. It. I grew up in Turkey, but that's a different point. Okay. Yes, I have. I have experienced that one hundred percent. Okay, in so, Israel. So, no, like, not in Israel, I, I, but in Turkey, for, I have. Oh, I know, I know. I'm talking about Israel. So, okay, fair enough. You've experienced that in Turkey. Do you think that you can understand without being there and without living there? Like that, you can convince them. Otherwise, I don't understand the the. I don't understand where that confidence comes from. How do you can make the that confidence statement. comes from my belief that uh, the the morally just thing. Like I will always unflinchingly support the morally just cause, right? No matter what happens. If, if we talk about the practical application, yes, there is going to be people that are resistance to that. Maybe even people who want to engage in acts of terror against that on the Israeli side, especially. But ultimately, these are solvable problems because I look at the material realities on the ground. Without American support, Israel, without Western support, unconditional support and trade, Israel would not be able to maintain an apartheid regime, just like South Africa was not able to maintain its apartheid regime. And as long as there is more pressure from the West, uh, this 
will most likely change if uh, America finally does the the righteous thing for once in its fucking life. Now, having you, said that, having yeah. said that, having said that, okay. By the way, um, and I, I just need to make this clear because you keep saying that you support the moralistic thing. I support the moralistic thing too. I'm talking pragmatics here. I'm telling you that yes. the one state is a non-starter. That's my point. The and pragmatism, the pragmatism that. does not I don't not have rely. chat open. I don't know what people are saying, but I can only imagine the fucking psychotic uh, yeah. take. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, don't don't pay having. attention to what and people by are the way, saying. All don't I'm, pay attention and, to what people are saying. If there's people watching this who are just seething, I'm I'm just telling you the this is just what it is. What I'm explaining to you is is what it is. And you ha and I believe that people need to reckon with the reality of the situation uh, to actually approach this from into a meaningful conversation. Because um, again, I ha I can't emphasize how much the one state thing is impossible uh, from the Israeli perspective. Yeah. But you know, you talk about you talk about sanctions. I mean, if you look at Russia, Western, all Russia and Israel are not. Hold on, hold on. Russia hold on. and Israel are not the same. Of course, they're different countries. Western um, leaders, they all predicted there would be a total collapse of Russia's economy, but all that happened was it made them more nationalistic, made them more resolved, it made them basically um, search out new partnerships, and I don't think that there's any evidence that Israel would be unable to do uh, the, same, the same things. Because it would. Because the only it times would. where a sanctions regime it beat America, it, the only the times the a day. sanctions regime regime has ever worked is if it's threatening our allies. That's it. We can work. We can actually sanction our allies. We cannot sanction our enemies in a way that like stops them from finding a way to continue surviving you, you with the same quality of life. Israel, Matt, Israel uh, is a democracy for Israeli Jews, right? It's not a democracy for the Israeli, the Palestinian citizens work, of Israel. Yeah. They. I, I don't, What's up? I think this idea that sh sanctions would change anything is because it would dramatically change the quality what, of what's life. What's the People, evidence of that? When has that worked? I gave you the evidence. It worked in South Africa. The fear of sanctions alone and businesses pulling out of South Africa, South Africa alone, was enough to change the attitude on the ground. It did work, and not only that, but also. I'm, so, I'm using so, this as an on. example South, because okay. Israel Africa. was allied with South Africa. And they personally saw how successful this was in South Africa, Hold which on. is why South APAC Africa made apartheid it. is completely different than the situation why that is it Israeli. Why is completely different? Okay, well, Israel, first of all, again, believes, the Israelis believe that they will all be killed. That's, so they're fighting for their survival. The, in their South African, uh, the South African white population also believe that, 100%. They also... They they also have like a ton of um i feel like they have a lot of leverage in terms of their um their everyone everyone is always everyone who has historically been the oppressor has always believed that once that oppression is not maintained that the retribution will be just as violent if not worse and history has never shown an example of that uh, in the, in the way that it actually has like been an incredibly violent retribution. Like, so you're I, saying? Are you like saying Haiti. that the um? Are you saying sanctions was singularly uh, responsible for ending apartheid? No, of course not. Of course and so, not. what percentage of it would you say? I don't know what the exact that? percentage with the with the sanctions would be, but all matter of conflict ultimately ends with a peaceful solution. No matter how violent the conflict is, it ends up. It ends up with a negotiations process, right? So, I don't know what you the know, exact percentage. Israel, I don't know what the exact Israel percentage will. of the what the sanctions was, but of course, yeah. on the ground, violent actions was also a major factor in making this apartheid as costly as possible. But yes, international uh, international support being pulled out of. South Africa was a gigantic burden for the South African economy, which forced the hands of South African politicians that wanted to maintain the apartheid into, you know, making new, uh, making a new arrangement. Finally, do you, do you think the global politics, uh, geopolitics, is uh, that we see in the world today is comparable to what we saw then? No, because I think the collapse of the USSR uh, also uh, was was playing a role in that process.
Because don't sure. you think that like the different there's there's different uh, allegiances and groups of nations forming, and you know, they'll one of them will take in Israel. There's just no shot. The China, idea, Russia, the North idea Korea, that the idea that someone might take in Israel is insignificant in this circumstance. You know why? Because the quality of life that Israel has afforded to uh, at least Jews inside of Israel proper is one that people do not want to take away. This is the major difference. If you live in a country like Russia, your government is already positioned against America sanctioning you before America even sanctions you. So you can withstand sanctions. Israel, on the other hand, has never considered the, the quality of life shift that would be seismic if there was Western sanctions upon Israel. The, it, it, it's just like, it's untenable. There's no uh, way out of it. There's no like, oh, we'll just like deal with China and then China will defend us well, while we still maintain the same arms, quality of life. They'll sell them arms. They'll, they'll, you know what I mean? They'll, no, they'll, I'm not saying that there they'll, aren't. There'll be, a, there'll be a valuable exchange of, of, of goods, ideas, IP, weapons. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, certainly. I, and by the way, Israel, <laughs> I, I, I say this because people really need to understand how much they think that if they dissolve the borders, they will all be killed. They will, fu they will use a nuclear bomb if they have to. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. It's like saying uh, we can't fucking, you know, raise taxes on the wealthy because, like, they'll just pull out and, and go somewhere else. Like, that's that? nuclear holocaust being an option in this situation is, like, a ridiculous one. Like, that's tell, not I only say it because um, the only way I see this happening is a all-out war. That's the only way. And, and Israel, in that case, if they were on the back end of losing an all-out war, they would use a nuclear bomb. By the way, as far as the apartheid regime goes, I believe uh, Israel was one of the countries that actually continued to support South Africa through the yeah, embargo. I know, and the... I know that. They, they had <laughs> yeah, a but joint... But it didn't work. It didn't work, right? Like, no, at the end I'm of the day... I'm not defending Israel. I no, know no, Israel... I'm not, I'm not saying this to defend it, Israel. Israel. I'm saying it they, didn't work. They had a joint operation with the South Americans to build nuclear bombs. I know. They, they loved them. Thank you. So I'm not, no, that's again, not that's not what I meant. Uh, the reason why I mentioned that is because South Africa had allies as well, but they lost Western support. And when you lose Western support, Israel you cannot. Is not, yeah, Israel's not gonna give them. Um, without alone. Western it's not, support, it's not it's not enough support from nations to to make a significant. No, it difference. is. It one hundred percent is. If you are if you are maintaining pressure on an ally, their economy will crumble so fucking fast. Uh, before, uh, that they will never be able, they will never ever be able to withstand it in the same way that a foreign adversary can. A foreign adversary can greatly diminish their quality of life because their quality of life is already not up to standard if you compare it to like Israel and the many benefits that uh, Israeli uh, citizens have and enjoy. That is a genuine political problem. That is a major political problem, which is why I, uh, people will say, Sanctions only work on allies. They don't work on, on uh, foreign adversaries. Like I Israel, the Israeli population would not uh, in a million years uh, take a, a, a massive seismic shift in their quality of life. A lot of people would fucking probably should have believe. They would. That's you don't I mean. understand. No, no, no. They would. They would take the, the seismic shift. They would. That's the thing that you don't understand. They would. And they, you know what I mean? They would. <laughs> I know. People underestimate what the fuck uh, Israel means to the people that live there. My point is always this. If BDS wasn't a genuine threat that Israel noticed and, and thought was like BDS? a legitimate threat, they would have not. What does BDS. South Korea have to do with the conflict? No, boycott divestments and sanctions on the state of Israel. Oh, okay. Uh, just BTS like BTS is, I do stand them. Yes, B we stand BTS. Uh, don't get mad at us, please. But um, BDS in and of itself was uh, was originally or, originally I I've been throwing them up too. B okay, BDS good. boycott divestments and sanctions, uh, which is controversial because like sometimes they there are uh, you know sometimes it does uh, over leverage overextend itself for sure and like goes after like random fucking uh, groups and whatnot. But like uh, as long as it's like steadily maintained. Um, Boycott, divestments, and sanctions is a successful, a successful way to apply pressure to Western governments to apply pressure to the state of Israel, just like it worked 
against apartheid South Africa. And that is precisely the reason why, because it worked against South Africa. It wasn't the sole reason, first of all. It, it wasn't. One of, of many. Wasn't. One of I many. I never said it was, but it, but it but was again, a major you're, reason. But again, you're using it as an example, like a silver bullet, like that, yeah, they did sanctions, and so apartheid ended. It's just not the same thing. Well, the I mean, reason Israel, why I'm using that anyways, is an I example. think we're going on and on about the sanctions too much, because the thing is, I guess we're at a bit of an impasse in that, like on one hand, looking at the two-state solution, I understand, you know, there's so many fucking settlers now, and the government in charge of Israel has, Netanyahu, basically, and his cabinet, have gone so fucking far, have done so much damage to the cause of peace by encouraging and arming these psychotic freaks that are out there, the settlers. Mm -hmm. Fucking, they are real villains. Um, so it does seem, you know, Israel has... They have removed settlements before, but not nearly that much, obviously. And so... I mean, the only time they removed settlements was uh, in, in 2005 when they pulled out of Gaza, and then they resettled those people in the West Bank. Right. So, like, that had happened. Uh, that was very... That was a big political move, too, that a lot of people were upset about. Um, so, I don't know. You know, it's, it's tough because both options seem so fucking far-fetched because of the damage that's been done by Netanyahu's cabinet and him in the West Bank, um, that both of them seem so far-fetched. This but, is, by the yeah. way, the, the settlements of the West Bank is precisely the reason why I'm saying that, like, a one state already exists currently. Whether we like to admit it or not, it is a one singular apartheid state, which is why I oh, believe but, in the disillusion of the apartheid. But then if you're, you're, you're talking about integrating Hamas and PLO into the Israeli government. Yes. Um, just like I'm talking about integrating why Jewish. I'm, and that's, again, why I'm integra that's why I'm talking about integrating the Jewish power party and many of the other far right Israeli components in Israeli society that actually uh, enjoy great civil liberties currently integrating them into society as well. In the United States of America, we have a lot of problems, right? We have a lot of issues. We have a lot of racism, for example. We, we live in a white supremacist nation. And yet, if the conditions for the Palestinians reflected the conditions of black people right now in the United States of America, this would be an unimaginable improvement than living under an apartheid regime. If the conditions, I used Turkey as an example before. I have long been a supporter of Kurdish people in developing a nation state for themselves. 35 million Kurdish people live in diaspora. I believe that they have a right to have a nation state for themselves in this region. And I think that there, I mean, there's a tremendous number of Kurdish people that are oppressed in the country of Turkey. Okay. Inside of Turkish borders. If the treatment of Kurdish people in Turkey resembled the treatment of Palestinians in Israel in a singular secular nation state, this would be a dramatic improvement on their quality of life. It would be celebrated by the Western world as a tremendous accomplishment. People would literally be celebrating it in the fucking streets. They'd be like, this is it. We did it. So um, this does not mean that like Kurdish people are not mistreated in Turkey. They certainly are. But that's how poor the structure is currently in the singular apartheid regime in Israel. I think, listen, I think you've definitely said stuff that I didn't, hadn't thought about in terms of like how a one state would be possible and certainly thinking about it on like a long term over like maybe a 50 year span then it really seems more likely that something like that could happen but i do think i don't think that um uh people who uh, people who discuss this uh, I don't know what's the right word because I know it's so sensitive with like leftists and liberal and all this shit. Like, so I, right. I don't like fucking saying all that shit, but people who are, and I don't even want to say pro Palestinian activists either because I mean, you know, um, I can say that maybe. Can I, can I say pro Palestinian? Uh, uh, because I, I, I feel that I advocate for the Palestinian people too, but my perspective is just that I don't think the people who talk about this understand. Um, how far Israel will go to make sure that that never happens. I, I do. I, I oftentimes don't want to showcase like the full-blown Israeli perspective on this matter in an effort to save face because I understand precisely how, how dangerous and how violent the rhetoric actually is and how right-wing the rhetoric actually is because 
Like, just like in the United States of America, if you look back at, like, uh, I don't know, the, the sentiment expressed towards black people in the civil rights movement, like, yeah, there is a there is a steady flow of misinformation and anger that builds up and resentment that builds up on the side that is the uh, party in power that has to has to exist so that you can maintain the the uh, structures of inequality. This has historically always been the case, and yet, when all is said and done, um, we have the capacity to adapt. And no matter how violent the perspectives of, of Israelis might be, and uh, there is still always going to be a way to prove to every single person that the best permanent security solution is one that revolves around offering Palestinians a life of dignity. This also, by the way, uh, and, and discounts the people, two-state solution. People do too. understand that. It's just getting there is the fucking problem, you know. Yeah. Obviously. No, I, I, I get that. I mean, I, you know, I understand I, I think it's, it's different. funny when people go, I see this clip going around the internet all the time where they go like, uh, Israel versus Palestine, it's not, it's not complicated. It's super simple. I do and I've seen you simple. say it. You say uh, apartheid. Is it good? Yes or no? Obviously, no. And that's not the hard part about this conflict. Everybody yes. can easily tell you apartheid is bad. The hard part of this conflict is deciding what the fuck to do about it. And in that regard, it is extremely complicated. Yes. Um, here's the thing, though. Um, I think that you are surrounded by people who, have, uh, who are very like-minded in many respects. So you don't see the other side of the conversation. Because a lot of people do say that Israel is not an apartheid. And it is actually very complicated. That wait, they're wait, not talking on. about what the side, solution. Hold on. What side is, is it you're saying I'm not exposed to? Or which side am I expo overly exposed to? I think you're, you're talking to like-minded people like myself. More mm -hmm. so than, than, I guess, like people who uh you know you're 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 talking to to people who already have like established okay. israel's an apartheid state because the overwhelming majority do not consider it that i agree and that's why it's important to frame these kinds of conversations because i understand that the rhetoric mainstream rhetoric in israel and in america is way 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 to the right of where we're talking now so i understand that uh, some people might look at this conversation and say that like you're missing the point i i know that I'm trying to engage in a good, good faith discussion. I don't need to acknowledge people that are like, oh, we need to kill all the fucking cousins. Like, obviously, that's insane. You know what I mean? But that's and, not even uh, what we're saying. Like, there are plenty of people who are like, oh, man, I really sure feel bad about the Gazans. But also, like, Israel has security concerns, so they have to eradicate Hamas. Like, I hear varying degrees of this kind of sentiment expressed from, uh, uh, you know, a diverse group of people. And ultimately, a lot of this still uh, revolves around like, I hate Netanyahu, but we have to keep uh, letting him do what he's doing, even though Netanyahu and what he has done so far in Gaza is simply a continuation of the pat multiple decades of, of um, uh, arrogance on behalf of uh, Israeli politics, assuming that like this, this apartheid regime can be maintained without any severe violent repercussions, not even listening to its own internal security forces like Shin Bet. These guys are not fucking woke, obviously. They're, you know, their their job is, you know, you know Shin Bet. Their job is to literally defend Israel's internal security. Like, when, when you have former leaders and also current existing Shin Bet members tell the Netanyahu government, hey, stop fucking over people in the West Bank because this is going to cause a major collapse. This is becoming a security issue. To which the Netanyahu government responds with, you're fucking woke, shut the fuck up. The deep state has infiltrated uh, Shin Bet. We're not going to listen to you. When you have, uh, you know, uh, former Israeli leaders saying that, like, this, this regime is far too brutal at this point to continue uh, without any severe repercussions. Um, and, and you have 76% of the population saying, we want to fucking fire Netanyahu. We want Netanyahu to leave while simultaneously supporting his actions in Gaza. There's this mismatch here. There's this disconnect. People want some kind of retribution, and that's understandable, a violent retribution. And, and yet they don't recognize that that violent retribution is what causes more violence down the line. This is how Hamas came to power, and it will never... You, you can never... Unless you do full-blown ethnic cleansing, you are never going to be able to take care of this problem through violent means. It doesn't work that way. History has only been solved in the exact opposite direction. But I do want to hear your, what your perspective is. Like, what do you think is the solution? Because I think you're, you believe in a two-state solution, right? 
I just, in terms of what's pragmatic, yeah. So, and again, you... I don't know how pragmatic it is because even saying it seems so fucking crazy because, like you said, but I think it is. I don't know. I don't know if it's possible. Um, but just under, from my perspective, which is that the dissolution of the borders will never ever happen, um, is that I think that obviously um, lifting. I think removing the settlers from the West Bank, that's obviously the biggest problem. Like, I don't know how you're going to do that. So how do you think you can remove 750,000 people living in, in occupied territory right now, whether it be both East Jerusalem, which is very densely populated, but also uh, within uh, the, the West Bank where there is uh, 451,000 uh, people living there? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you could do it by force or you could just say you guys are on your own now, like... This isn't our territory. Yeah, but don't you think that that would be incredibly violent? Like, it to would the be, yeah, it would be horrible. There? And there's also no reason for them to do that because I don't think that that's what Israel wants. I think what Israel wants historically, or at least what it's shown me and others, uh, Israeli scholars themselves who have changed their perspective from a two-state solution to a single-state solution as well, is that... We're just going to keep dangling the peace negotiations in an effort to slowly but surely push out Palestinians from their own ancestral homes as we did. You want me to answer the question? What's up? Do you want me to answer the question you asked? Yeah. So um, I believe that that's the biggest, that's the biggest uh, problem, but removing them and uh, lifting the barriers of, you know, the, lifting the walls, creating a Palestinian state, um, there'd probably need to be, I know in 1948, there was talks about a train that connected Gaza and the West Bank and, or something like that. <laughs> or, but, but I don't know, maybe there'd be some concessions of land there to make it con uh, continuous. And, um, and also I would be in favor of some kind of reparations too. Now, again, that seems far-fetched. It does seem far-fetched. I grant, I, I give it, it's granted, but like, it's so hard. It's equally hard for me to, it's harder for me actually to imagine Israel ever conceding. Do you think Saudi Israel would boundary. concede to a two state solution then? <laughs> I mean, I think, I think there would be an appetite for it if the, if the um, situation was, if like the vibes were right to put it in a silly way. Like, if there was a fair a duration of peace and goodwill talks, if you go back again to Arafat and Rabin, even though a lot of Palestinians, I'm trying not to chew gum, a lot of, a lot of Palestinians were not uh, happy with, with it, but if you can go back to 1948 and make more concessions, I don't know, man. I don't fucking know. I don't know. They both seem so far-fetched and difficult, if I'm being honest. Yes. Because the settler situation just ruins the whole fucking thing. There's just too many settlers. Yeah. I don't there know. There are 750,000 total, but 450,000 just in West Bank alone. Do you want to know the number of settlers that existed uh, in the West Bank in um, 1977? What was it? 7,000. So... Uh, and in the yeah, '90s, yeah. that only increased to like what? Tw I don't know what the exact number was. Hold on, I'm gonna look this up really quickly. So, let's see, 1990 uh, number of settlers in the West Bank. In the West Bank in 1988, in 19 by 1988, hold on, what is the number of settlers in the settlements in the West Bank? According to the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics, wait, what is this? Number of settlers in Israeli settlements in the West Bank region by 1986. By 1986, the West Bank area, excluding Jerusalem, was 60,000. By 1990, it was 88,000. And then if, if you included uh, uh, Jerusalem, it reached up to 132,000. So in the 1990s, this number continuously grew to 100,000 to... Uh, to grow and grow and grow and only continued to go through this peace process, starting the peace process around uh, 88,000 and, and I guess like now arriving at 
456,000 in the West Bank and then 232,000 in Jerusalem. So when you look at I mean, these yeah, numbers, the Israeli really government really fucked up. I mean, they didn't fuck up. That the, well, I know was it was by point. design. I know it was by yeah, design. They was want the to. It's easier for them to claim all that land if people are been living there and they're established and like you know what I mean because it's harder to do it. That's why they did it. So, yeah. and and in in this process, know. this was of course this process was also done uh, deliberately to enforce to destroy contiguity. Uh, in the West Bank. That's why West Bank was partitioned off into three separate areas, A, B, and C, and, uh, of course, control over the the uh, areas that even Palestinians live in is also disputed. Israel took over more than 80% of the West Bank in this time frame, 80%, by saying these are uh, the, this is a, a matter of, of military necessity. Uh, Bet Selim has a really helpful guide on this if you want to look at it as well. They have, like, an interactive map that you can scroll through throughout time to see it. And, and uh, in that process, they set up checkpoints. In that process, they set up two specific highway systems where Palestinians could only go on certain roads with a tremendous number of checkpoints versus Israelis could go on all the other roads. And right. I know. I know. It's horrible. It's yeah, apartheid. So, and it's so, crazy. But, so to, you know, me, to me, this was the right. opportunity. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe one state is more likely. Maybe I can see it. But, but like, I just have a hard time reconciling that. But the way the way that you explained it definitely does make me think that it it would be it could be possible over a long period of time. So it would just have it would have to be a really it'd have to be, you know, 50 years from now. And uh, we didn't we didn't nuke the whole planet. And somehow there's been a period of relative peace and calming of tensions and stuff. Yeah. I can see it. I can but, see that. But that, that, but that more... starts. But that starts with in good faith. And there's always going to be people who want to fuck that up. But there's even be people... Hassan, even if the one state, there's still going to be these radical, fundamental settlers there that the Palestinians yes. are going to want to fucking kill. Rightfully, right? Or I yes. mean, I don't kill. Killing people isn't right, but there's going to be fundamental Islamists. No, there, that there's want to yeah, exactly, kill absolutely. Yeah. You're you're right about that. Except there are. Uh, this is something that I talked to Jake about because I think Jake's understanding is like kind of childish of the matter. He always says like, oh, it's Jank, religion. Oh. It's Jake. Jake for president, bro. Yeah, Jake for president. He's going to do it. He, he's going to do the damn thing. Um, You're going to be VP? But <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, well, I do have a, I could actually technically run for president. He can't because I'm an American citizen. He's not. not um, or not I mean, yet. he's not a, he's yet. a naturalized American citizen. Uh, I am. A natural born U.S. citizen. So one thing I want to say is this. He always says like, oh, well, you know, it's a religious war. I'm like, no, it's not. Here's uh, obviously it's not. But think about it this way. We have our own versions of, of psychopathic fundamentalist terrorists, right? We do. And every now and then there's an active stochastic terror and that's devastating. And we deal with it through the normal criminal court system, Right. That's what will happen. I'm not saying that like it's going to be perfect and everyone's going to get together, hold hands and say kumbaya, okay? That like everyone's going to hug and kiss one another. But uh but what we do have a tendency to collaborate with one another, okay? We do we do have a tendency to live in peace. That's what we want to do. So, uh ultimately, if there is a, a structure, if there's a one-state structure, of course there's going to be fucking psychotic like Jewish power people and also Islamist fundamentalists or even people who are like, nah, fuck that. I want to kill settlers regardless. Those guys are going to go to jail. Just like the kickstarting of that process also revolves around making sure that there is a tribunal for war criminals on both sides. Like being able to capture and also... Uh, 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 bring to justice then war what, criminals what on both sides of the equation. What do you What's do up? about the settlements that are there now? I guess you're saying it doesn't matter because everybody can live wherever they That's, want. The settlements are precisely the reason why I don't believe in a two-state solution because I don't believe that there is any reasonable way to eradicate 400,000 people and then 230,000 from Jerusalem. Like that, You cannot do that in a peaceful way. So you cannot take these people out of there. By the way, right. you were talking the about the Holocaust people... survivors. The Holocaust survivors is actually a really interesting thing. I didn't even know about this, but you know about this because you lived in Israel. They're some of the poorest people in Israel. Some of them that were moved into uh, settlements in the West Bank as well, but like 
I think, what is it? Like one third of every Holocaust survivor that's remaining lives in like abject poverty. So I don't know that. I mean, there's not a lot of them left. Yeah. I do. I, I don't know about their economic. Uh, no, it's, it's really, condition. really, it's really fucked up. So like, it's, you know, I, I, I know that the, I know that the, the, the thing is like, oh, it'll, there will be another uh, Holocaust or whatever, but like, you know, Israel should probably look into helping its Holocaust survivors that are still alive at this point, rather than uh, so hornily try to fucking take as much land as possible. This is sure. the, this I, is the whole listen, point. I agree. Yeah. Take care of them. Take care of everybody. But you know, it's like, I think it's so fucked up right now. It's crazy how fucked up it is. Both, both options seem like pipe dreams that right now in this point in time. Like, I'll tell you this much. What changed for me, what, what I realized was like, especially in this last iteration, this last like uh, counter to the, to the uh, October 7 uh, tragedy, what I realized was, or it, I guess it made it permanent in my mind, is that the Israeli government completely removed from the interests of the Israeli citizenship, uh, Israeli citizenry, operates with a one-track mind. They care more about like expelling Palestinians, not always like ethnically cleansing, but ethnically displacing Palestinians from this territory, from the territories they occupy, than they do about the safety and security of the Israeli citizens. I saw this being reflected by those who had been victim uh, to, to uh, the attacks on uh, Kibbutz Beri and other uh, Kibbutzim as well. Uh, some, of the, some of the victims immediately after, while they like, were still trying to figure out uh, where their family members were, were in that uh, hotel in the Dead Sea, and they basically were reflecting on the things that had happened. And they were saying a similar thing that it's like, it's like you care, if you care more about, uh, if you care more about like killing Palestinians or, or pushing Palestinians into the sea uh, than you do about like the safety and security of uh, the Israeli citizens, like, of course, this is going to happen. This is going to continue happening over and over again. And, uh. and, and, why, why am I saying this? Because on October 7th and October 8th and October 9th, there were still Palestinian militants inside of Israeli boundaries, right? But what was the first action that Israel engaged in? The first action that Israel engaged in for the first two days was immediately to start bombing Gaza. To me, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, protect what your do you own think, borders what do you think israel should have done in response to october 7th i think obviously uh, overtaking and and maintaining permanent security in the southern regions was the first thing to do the second thing to do would be to instead of bombing gaza unless there is like uh areas where there's rocket fire coming from which they uh, uh trade off uh time and time again but instead of indiscriminately bombing gaza i think the first thing to do in that situation would be to dismantle the government in the way that it existed like get netanyahu out of power okay, 85 okay, okay so you're 80, saying israel in response, hold on dude you're saying in response to this terrorist attack israel should have dismantled their own government first set of so first set of actions would be to democratically um take netanyahu out of power yes and then engage in a hostage release scheme that would then also that would then also lead to a larger uh, larger negotiations process. Absolutely. You're and if serious? they were, and if they didn't comply, and if Hamas didn't comply, yes, I then you fucking should, bomb. But, but then, then I mean, you bomb. Like it's not my my point is my point is always this. Like I talk to my friends who are definitely a lot more uh, a lot more conservative than you are, right? Um, my, my friends who are, you know, Ooh, Zionists, first. okay, um, yeah. who are a, a, a lot more conservative not, in their I, I don't know in what way I'm conservative at all. You're not. I'm saying that I have friends and who are a so lot more conservative. You mischaracterize me what I believe. It's really, I am not saying about. I'm not mischaracterizing you at all. If I, w You're first not. of all, if I thought you yeah. were a, a reactionary on this matter, I would not be having a, a, a normal conversation with you. I would be incredibly critical and would be more interested in like yelling and, and trying to, to nudge my position across instead of like uh, walking through this step by step and get fed. Are you, I, are you wearing baby gloves for me? 
No, I'm not wearing baby gloves for you. I think that you are a very kind-hearted person who literally oh. lived in Israel. So you, of course, have like biases, just like I do, right? Uh, biases in the other direction. But you like are someone it. who is is ultimately led by empathy. That's not. I'm not saying it's a baby gloves at all. I think like if if you well, are I think faced it with helps, some... then I'm not saying that we should kill all Palestinians. Certainly, that would be a yeah. different conversation. Yes, exactly. But I don't think like this is something that I've. Uh, explained to my audience time and time again which was like that you you pick your battles like there's no reason to fucking uh people love yelling at whatever is in front of their faces and i think that you are someone who does have a lot of empathy for palestinian people and and it is in my opinion ridiculous and unproductive to just like fucking spend any time being like oh you're bad you're wrong like fuck you that's my perspective since i'm on your stream I'll just say this. I, I don't know the majority, but there was like a big portion of your fan base that was, I felt so unfairly and overly over the top, just so nasty that it really, it made me want to disengage from the whole thing. And just like, I just don't understand like what I've done to deserve that, that level of fucking hate and accusations uh, uh, other than just trying to like, understand the conflict more or saying that hamas are terrorists which i don't know why that that that's in uh, contention but I, it's because I, i've even i mean i don't know what people want i've even uh, frankly been nudged i think yeah i could say i've been nudged towards the one state thing like it makes more sense to me after talking about it with you and so i don't know what fucking allies people are looking for if i'm not a good ally for you guys um then then i don't know like, I, I'm talking to them because how are we ever going to actually have meaningful dialogues or meaningful peace about this when someone like me is too fucking uh, Zionist or something for, for you to even talk to? Like, I think, if, I you, think a if, lot you of people... if you if you can't build a bridge with me, then I don't think you're going to build a bridge with a single person in Israel ever. I, I, I know. I agree with you. Um, I think the reason... I guess like this is not a defense because I've like criticized people yelling at you regularly uh, and have uh, have told people to to, you know. I have told people to just like think about this critically and understand that there's a broad coalition that is an absolute necessity if you want to make any changes in the political realm and like e that you are not anyone's enemy in this in this uh, struggle. I've, I've repeated it time and time again. Um, I told like I don't spend a lot of time in discord but i've I have seen, nuked I've my seen own, you say that and i I've appreciate nuked my own discord yeah. uh yeah. It before, i appreciate what you've said and Very i right. think that it's uh i think ultimately uh i think ultimately it's silly to to yell at someone like yourself on, on this process even if there are disagreements uh even if there are disagreements that people might have with you i mean but the difference of course is it's the same cycle, right? It's the same cycle that you and I experience in other situations in our lives. Like we say something, uh, tensions are high, and then people just like automatically take a like a black and white position on it, what and then they we posture. Not in the studio right now. This is what? so stupid. We've been talking for like two hours. And we could have done the podcast. I'm the one who told you we could do it. You're the one who said you're sick. Well, I'm I am sick, but I'm just sitting here talking yeah. for two fucking hours. Yeah, we could have done it. I didn't even I didn't even like promote it uh, because I, I you know I always worry that people are just gonna fucking uh, take advantage of like any kind of any kind of conversation we have to like move it in a in a direction that uh, you know gives them clout for no fucking reason I hate that shit but so I think maybe I would like to pivot maybe to talking about the um, from the land to the sea and maybe trying to explain why. Uh, from the perspective of Israelis or and Jewish people at large, that they they see yeah. this as a, as a as a problematic thing to say. I mean, at worst, right? We can do that, but I have to pee first. Okay, let me pee real Go quick, ahead. and then you you can you can explain your position if you want. Um, I'll wait. While I pee. I'll, wait. Fine. I'll take over, guys. Everybody watching, go to TeddyFresh.com. Black Sale Friday. Black Friday sale is live now, you guys. Up to 60% off. Get over there. Teddyfresh.com. Now is your chance. More than ever. You've seen Hassan wearing it. It's cool. It's slick. It's neat. 
um teddyfresh.com black friday sale is live now now <sighs> yeah, I don't know. the reason i don't like having these conversations is just because like i <sighs> Dude, it's just not worth it for all the fucking bullshit about, like, the amount of hateful shit I get. And, like, I, I feel that I'm, I'm really, I try to be really open-minded and, like, open to new ideas. Um, obviously, I'm not perfect, but the shit people say is crazy, man. That is a Garth Brooks reference. I'm reading chat now, by the way. Does Teddy Fresh use slave labor? No. All of our factories are certified humane. There's organizations that certify um, factories as having good conditions, work conditions, living conditions, uh, pay conditions, age conditions, stuff like that. So they check all this shit off. Um, all right, I'm back. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Uh, you were talking about, you were talking about, uh, from the river to the sea, Palestine yeah, yeah. will be free. And okay, they so like at worst, the worst interpretation of that would be like mm -hmm. someone like Hamas or Hezbollah or like terrorist organizations who are like, yeah, we want to actually kill everybody there. That's the worst interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot of people, obviously most vast majority of people who do say that don't want to kill all the Jews there, right? But, but like, so at the best interpretation of it, it basically means, as I've said, this one state disillusion of the state of Israel. And a lot of people also see that. I would say the vast majority of people in Israel see that as a genocide. So that it's, it's, if it's viewed in that scope, and there's another interesting thing that I've noticed about this. I mean, the thing is, like, that phrase does have a long history of being used by terrorists. And yeah. so, and so, you know, you but, wouldn't... Hold on, hold wait, on. Can I, I'll, I'll, can I me, do something, though? Because, like, the terrorism on. designation here... Point. Okay, let oh, me go make ahead. My, make your full yeah, point. Let me make my full point here, and then you can respond. There's an interesting phenomenon going on here where, you know, my, when minorities tell you they're offended by something... Usually, especially liberals and leftists, they'll, they'll listen because it's not their place, right? They'll say, it's not my place. If you say it, then that's what it is. I mean, Jews are make up 60% of all hate crimes in America right now. Mm -hmm. So, so when, when Jewish people look at that and they say, listen, it makes me uncomfortable the way that that's used. Um, it, I find it interesting that people see that as an, an opportunity to argue instead of listen Especially to me, it's like you can make the same argument about the Confederate flag where Southerners will be like, listen, it's just about our heritage. You know what I mean? That has nothing to do with racism. And maybe and, and some people do believe that. Right. But at the end of the day, okay. if a black person is like that Confederate flag is offensive to me, you're not going to argue with them and say, no, it's just heritage. Like not everybody who uses it is racist. So okay. then, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't seem fair. I, I know, but. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. Where do I begin here? So one, um, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free is, uh, is a, uh, it, it, it's origination. It's inception comes from the PFLP, uh, the, uh, popular front for liberation of Palestine, well, it, which you're it, right. Was considered swaps, a terrorist uh, existed before Nazis. Okay. You know, Hold I'm on. Just saying. I, I understand. I'm going to, I'm going to describe it. Okay. Go ahead. Um, in its inception and in its broader context, historically, since the 60s, it has always been utilized as a slogan for emancipation and never for anti-Semitism. The reason why Hamas it adopted it, the reason, why, yeah, the reason why Hamas yeah. co-opted it when they had 3% support as opposed to the PLO, which had 83% support, right? Alongside, support alongside uh, the PLO was because it was the slogan that was the slogan for Palestinian emancipation. This does not mean that, like, 
that slogan changed at any given point to mean uh, killing all the Jewish people just because it was co-opted by a marginal militant faction Whoa. that in and of itself has never reached a, a similar level of popularity to even a two-state solution has historically amongst Palestinians. They've never polled anywhere near 52% so, so where do you? In which part of this do you think it's fair to argue with a with a group that makes up 80% of all hate crimes that happen in America, or not 80, because, 60%, because that, the, that, you, you're, that you can argue with them and say, no, it's, it's fine. I'm, I'm going to tell you. because Well, two reasons. One, because Palestinians are the oppressed party in the structure against the state of Israel, not Jews, the state of Israel, which does not, in, I think you and I both agree, uh, does not represent the interests of, of Jews at all and will falsely conflate the interests of Jews with the interests of the state of Israel specifically so they can um, continue to uh, continue to engage in this argument sometimes from a disingenuous uh, framing, a disingenuous conflation. Jewish people themselves say from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Jewish people are at the forefront of the anti-apartheid, I mean, anti-Zionist sure. Activism, Jewish Voice for Peace, Jews for Economic, I mean, and the existence of Jewish people doesn't. I don't. That point is not so, very persuasive. I mean, of course there is. What do you? Of course, it's. I, I think it's very important because, because there's it was Israelis like, that say it. You, and no, or minority or Jewish people shouldn't be offended by it because some people say it. I mean, no, I think I think because Jewish people. I'm not going to talk about this as like Jewish people in general. The reason why I brought up. Jews for uh, uh, Jewish Voice for Peace and other groups using this as well, like Jews themselves in America using this uh, anti-Zionist slogan, indicates that this slogan isn't one that is about the evisceration of Just Jews. If that was the case, that, then that, then they no. wouldn't use it. There, there was Jewish collaborators with fucking Nazis. Ethan, that were don't do that, it. please. Don't say that the Jews Voice for Peace are akin to Capos. Like that's. I'm telling you that the mere existence of Jewish voices doesn't is not it's not a leg to stand on. I don't understand that. Of but course, you, there's going to be. But you're failing. But you're. Jews. But the most important component it. here, the it's the like most you're tokenizing a few is that, Israelis. It seems silly. What, Ethan? The you're like here. Check out my Israeli. He says it. <laughs> that's not. <laughs> then no, I don't. I don't find it a good point. It's it well. I will explain to you why it's not a comparison, because I think you agree with me on this as well. That it's Palestinian emancipation is just right. It's just, whereas the Confederacy is not. The Confederacy was there to preserve. They said state rights, but states rights, but it was there to preserve the maintenance of slavery. Palestinian emancipation is not uh, or has not ever been broadly defined at any moment throughout its history uh, the, the, uh, the evisceration of all Jews living in Israel or the forcible expulsion of all Jews living in Israel. Other militant factors that were never ever as popular as the broader Palestinian emancipatory movement have taken on this slogan alongside slogans like Free Palestine in general. The, the same exact argument Palestine. to say from uh, Pal free Palestine from the river to the sea can also be applied to free Palestine as well. The, it's just a matter of, it's, it's just a matter of where the motivations lie. You have how, to look at how Israelis view it is that you're well, saying I, that about, Israel I don't care about how Israelis view it. I will, I will admit that I don't and Jews at large. I think no, there's a, I, I think most Jews, I don't think, think Jews at large crazy. view it. I don't think that that is the. What in what position are you to even say that? Uh, well, I'm in the position of like I'm in the position of, of almost almost large. entirely getting. I know uh, my my perspective is not motivated my by myself. Group. It's motivated by Jews against anti-Zionist no, Jews. Seriously, how can you speak for my entire ethnic group? I find that really interesting. Well, I don't speak for your entire ethnic group. How many Jews have you polled about if they find that offensive or not? It doesn't matter if people Which find it you offensive. Know a ton of Jews. It doesn't matter if Jews find it offensive, Ethan. It doesn't That's matter if a minority group finds something anti-Semitic. Yes, of course, because we're not talking about Jews at all. We're talking about Israel. 
This is okay, another. This know, is a conflation I'm, between Israel and per, no. In this case, the perception is because that phrase has been co-opted by terrorist groups and it's been used widely by terrorist groups, and 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 this the idea that's being communicated. Although we've talked about the one state idea today and, and the way that we've discussed it definitely seems like more realistic, but I don't, people don't think about it that way. They think about basically the state of Israel disappearing and Jews, when Jews around the world think about the state of Israel disappearing and there's like a mass fucking genocide of all the Jews there, then yes, they're going to look at that and, and they're not going to be happy about it. Ethan. Israel is the party with all of the power in this structure. Palestinians have no you. power I'm in this structure. Why I'm going to listen to the Palestinian voices and, and tell you the historical reference points as to what from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free when talking about it. So just like when, a, when, a, at what point can a phrase be co-opted by a terrorist? And then you'd be like, mm, maybe I'm just, we'll back off that one. Um, the swastika and the Nazi comparison is actually a wonderful one. And I do not think that the Hamas or any Palestinian group has ever actually reached the machine of ethnic cleansing that the Nazis the have. Making that comparison, in my opinion, do. is like diminishing about, the impact of the Holocaust. It's not what they've done or can do. It's about the meaning of it, you know? Yeah, Hamas also says free Palestine. That doesn't change the, the meaning behind free Palestine. It doesn't mean anything. What you have to well, look at is what the broader Palestinians, what the, what the Palestinian movement believes, what the Palestinian movement uh, implies when they're saying this. And it's important. It's important because, like, what are people to do, Ethan? What is the, what is the solution here? We say Palestinians can't say from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. There's people claiming that even saying a ceasefire is actually against Israel's best interests or even anti-Semitic, as a matter of fact. At, 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 which, at a certain point, at a certain point, you have to realize that like maybe it's a little disingenuous and that it's more so to just like squash any amount of I mean, at, a, like any, any amount of sentiment expressed about, towards Israel. At and, any and, point, should you think about maybe I'm maybe I should ease off this because it is offensive to most, the vast majority of Jews, interpret it in a not nice way, despite what people's intentions are, and that maybe it's counterproductive to double, triple, quadruple down on it. No, because I'm not going to... How, is that, how does that help the cause of Palestinian freedom? When people go... Because I'm not going to, because I'm not going to make concessions say, that I don't, uh, that, that have no, that hold no historic weight, that I'm actually, uh, that I'm actually listening to the Palestinians when they say what okay. they mean. Because I don't oh. have this like secret, uh, because I don't have this like, uh, like secondary assumption that Palestinians actually are sneakily meaning something else. Like they, ooh, I, they're like no, actually talking about the destruction of Jews. I know put, that's not what you that said. I know that's not mouth. what you said. You're not saying that. You're not saying that at all, but there are plenty of people who are implying that. And even then, I'm simply stating the historical precedent for this sentiment. And of course, I'm going to combat misinformation. And I'm, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue combating misinformation in a country that is outright hostile towards Muslims and outright hostile towards Palestinians from the, the actual state, right? There's anti-Semitism. This is absolutely true. Anti-Semitism is a gross hate crime. It is completely unacceptable. You and I are in agreement on this. I've, def I've combated anti-Semitism nonstop think, for the past 10 years. there's any people that hear that and they think, you know what? That means no fuck it. No, we got to get rid of all the Israelis. Do you think there's anyone that believes that? That we have to get rid of all of the Israeli Jews from, in that area? The river of course, to the sea. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So, there are anti Semites. People, there are anti Semites in the uh, pro Palestinian movement. Of you think that are. it could be potentially misconstrued? Can it be potentially misconstrued? Absolutely. Anything can be misconstrued. So Any slogan that, and, can be and, misconstrued. And all these things, if it can be misconstrued, if it is believed by people to mean it that way, then I don't think Jews are, are uh, outside of their right to say, hey, this, thing, this phraseology makes me uncomfortable. And I find it interesting that of all the minority groups, um, and again, people don't consider Jews a minority because they're white. I only say minority group. Or some, some, most Jews are white, not all of them. But mm -hmm. uh, 
I say it because 60% of all hate crimes in the United States are against Jewish people that make up like less than 1%. So I find it interesting that when a minority group says like this phrase makes me uncomfortable and I think the pro proliferation of this phrase is, you know, is... Uh, you, you're it, saying it, a minority. You're saying a minority right. group, but but and, the problem here is this: I don't think it's fair to just say, "Well, fuck you." I don't because think it's, because I don't think it's the good. And I don't the think conversation the conversation either. revolves around Palestinians, which you know Muslims are a minority group in general. Palestinians an even smaller minority group against Zionists, specifically Zionists who are who are maintaining the the. Uh, the, the violent nature of the apartheid state in Israel. So in that structure, there are significantly more Zionists in America than there are Zionist Jews, and then there are anti-Zionist Jews. Zionist and anti-Zionist Jews are marginal because of the number of Jews in general on the planet, right? The much larger conversation is being had between Palestinian activists, which feature anti-Zionist Jews, and anti-Zionists alike, some of which are anti-Semitic. I'm not going to say that they're not, okay? Versus the much broader, much larger Zionist community that is comprised almost entirely of Zionist evangelicals, Zionist Christians in general. That's the conversation so that's what, being had point, about the state of Israel. You can, you can criticize Saudi Arabia and do it from an Islamophobic perspective, but many people are never going point? to turn around and say you're being Islamophobic when you criticize Saudi Arabia. But when you criticize Israel, because the, the, the foreign ministry has uh, maintained this position and this posture for a very long time, propped up by the likes of the ADL, this conflation is the immediate counter. And I think it's cynically deployed. Is there real... Right. Is there real anti-Semitism that occurs? Deployed. Absolutely. It's not cynically deployed. It's not. I mean, maybe some. I don't know. I don't think no. so. I think come on. Really you, think, you, don't think, you don't think people are cynically saying something is anti-Semitic? Anti Do you know how many people call me an anti-Semite? There's like literally fucking groypers online who... I who, think Jewish people don't like that phrase. It makes them uncomfortable. It's used by Hamas. It's used by the fucking jihadist group, uh, the Palestinian jihadist group. It's used by other extremist organizations. It's yes. been co-opted. At what point, at what level of co-opting do you think it's time to phrase this out? At what level of co-optation? I told you already. The swastika what? is a great example of this. The Nazis so, are so, gigantic. So it's not the racist? Na so it's not racist until there's like a full mass systemic genocide of Jews. No, it's not racist until there is a there is a broad movement behind oh, full blown the right ethnic I mean. cleansing of Jewish people. Yes, even if it's like in support, there is no in the grand scheme of things throughout history, throughout the history of Palestinian emancipation, which I will reaffirm my support for. I do believe it is just, and I believe it is moral. Throughout that history, Hamas is but a mere blip. Okay. Hamas is but a mere blip, and even to this day is not uh, has never reached broad popularity. Hamas That's itself is like re, uh, reinstituted as a charter as well. If you want to fucking believe what they're saying, it doesn't matter. No. But ultimately, the, uh, the the mantra itself predated Hamas and will continue to exist as long as there is an occupation. So having a conversation about the optics of a com uh, uh, optics no, of a not, slogan. I'm not I'm when when saying... 11,000 Palestinians have been ruthlessly slaughtered by that same state is, is ridiculous to me. It's I think it's fair. I think it, it's this characterization is super unfair. I mean, you're Why? making it sound like I'm a fucking, like, like, it's got not, it, the, the concern for it has nothing to do with what, you know, uh, the Israeli government is doing the ethnic cleansing and murdering of Palestinians. It's got nothing to do with that. Invoking that is not fair. 57% of Gazans, by the way, and I'm not criticizing them. I understand why people would support Hamas during all this in, 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 uh, who are in Gaza. But you say that, I mean, they have... Yes, uh, in 2017, in 2017, Hamas in changed and, his and, charter and, and in order Gaza. to gain international recognition. It, it, has, and, it, it has wide support in, in Gaza and in, the West. In 2017, so Hamas I, so changed his saying, charter in order to maintain its civil governance factions and also gain international recognition, as had prior terror cells, like the ones that you mentioned, that Ben Shapiro still considers a terrorist, like Yasser Arafat, as they try to do the exact same thing. You might not believe them, 
Okay, I do think that there are certainly still anti-Semitic people inside of Hamas, of course, but ultimately, Palestinian people saying that they support violent still, you emancipation. Think Hamas people that are secular and cool and don't hate Jews. Do I think there are Hamas militants? Absolutely, yes, one hundred percent. No, that's not what I asked. I said, do you think there's Hamas people that are like chill and secular and they like and they don't hate Jews? Oh, one hundred percent. What? Yeah. You, you can yell at me all day for that. I 100,000% believe it. There are fucking 18, 19 year olds. They don't know anything except fucking bombs being blown up in their heads. That is simply an express, that is simply a means of violent retaliation. I don't think people operate on being bad and being good. I think people operate on, holy fuck, there's a bomb blowing up in my, in my face that killed my fucking family. I hate this fucking state. And I'm going to join whichever faction will allow me to uh, uh, will allow me to to continue fighting uh, fighting against this this state. Um, Not every single person is like motivated by like cleansing uh, every Jewish person uh, in Israel. If that was the case, they would not I, have tried to I, make a. They would not have tried. Okay, if that was the case, they would not have tried to change their charter and become more. Uh, and and recenter their posturing so that they can get international recognition. Whether it was going to happen or not is one other the, thing. The original one was like insane. Yeah. And who the yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree. Open this link. I mean, this was just happened last week. If you'll pull, pull this up. What is this? It's one Memory of the head. reports. What the fuck is this? Oh, it's, a clip. it's just a clip of a Hamas. Oh uh, yeah, this uh, is the yeah, this is the Lebanese guy. Okay, so. Hamas, this just is, like every other just here. Play okay, it, just play it. Just play it. I know. I've already played this. It's oh, gonna. I he's gonna to say we're gonna it. do a thousand, a million October sevens. Yes, I know. Just play it. Just play it. I want people to see it. Okay, here I'll play it right now. I think my dog groomers outside. Well, somebody, I'll just read it. Somebody has to read the. Okay. The, yeah. It says because it constitutes security, military, and political uh, catastrophe uh, to the Arabs. I'm reading it. To the Arab and Islamic nation, it must be finished. I can't hear you. Ethan, this is not the own that you think it is. I've already covered this. I already talked about this. I just want people to see it. I know. I've sh I've showed this on my stream. I don't know why you hey, think this me... is like an own. Well, do you think that every single person watching right now has seen uh, every second of your stream? I don't. I don't know. But okay. I mean, here we'll just probably not. We'll we'll play it again. But I'm simply stating that like. You know, I'll I'll read it for you if you want. It's not like a. This I'll is not read like a it secret, if you're though. if you're going outside to do your get your dog groomer. I can read yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here I'll, oh, I'll just. Oh shit! Play. Never mind. The groomer's not even here. Oh wait! I can't play it on your stream. Never mind. Yeah, I, I can play it, but it doesn't matter. Here, here. So uh, play it. Not even play here. it. If you don't mind, <laughs> just reading the. Yeah. The Alox of flood is just the first time, and there will be a second, a third, a fourth. Because we have the determination, the resolve, and the capabilities to fight. We will have to pay a price, and yes, we are ready for it. We are called a nation of martyrs, and we are proud to sacrifice martyrs. We did not want to harm civilians. But, we are comp but there were complications on the ground. And there was a party in the area with a civilian population. It was a large area across 40 kilometers. The occupation must come to an end. Occupation where? In the Gaza Strip. No, I'm talking about all the Palestinian lands. Does that mean the annihilation of Israel? He says, yes, of course. The existence of Israel is illogical, but there's cuts in there too. I don't even know what the fuck he's saying, but it doesn't matter. He's saying a bunch of fucking uh, psychotic, uh, bloodthirsty shit. I agree. This is one of the uh, head. This is a guy I've seen him before. He's a spokesman for Hamas. Yes, there are two different. Do there are multiple different Israeli factions within Hamas are, right now. There are multiple on, different factions within Hamas right now. Is, hold on, let me finish it. The existence of Israel is what causes all the pain, blood, and tears. It is Israel, not do, us. Do you we want me to? Do you want me to talk about it? He's going to say one million October seventh as well. Uh, says, it, it is Israel, not us. Let me we just are the victims. Read it. There's only like ten seconds left. Okay. Okay. Therefore, nobody finish. should blame yes, us so. for the things we do. We are the victims of the occupation, period. Therefore, nobody should blame us for the things we do. On October 7th, on October 10th, on October 1 million, everything we do is justified. Yeah, he even says it in English. He says, it is justified. Okay? Are you happy? Now, let's talk about it. Because you, were, you brought this up as though this is like an own or something. One, for as many bloodthirsty... Uh, uh, 
psychotic freaks exist in fucking Hamas, there is a, a the same number of non democratically elected motherfuckers in Israel that say the exact same shit. Dude, you and I I'm are in not agreement on that. I'm saying this to defend Israel. I'm saying it because I I'm just telling you why people are uncomfortable okay. with that phrase from the river to the sea because they interpret its use like what this guy is saying, which is that from the river to sea, say to Israel be destroyed and there'll be no Jews left in the region. Hi, Teddy. How are you, sweetheart? You have a good day? Okay. Yeah. For the record, the from the river to the sea is in the Likud charter as well, and they do have the material. Uh, not only do they have the support in their coalition government, but also the material realities reflect that uh, Israel is a genocidal apartheid state. So when they say okay. from the river to the sea, it, you know, so this, uh, this phrase, is, this, when does this it land become... belongs to Israel, that, that is it... a little bit more important. However, I don't even care about that sloganeering. I don't care about what Israel and... says either. I care about the actions. Okay. Okay. No, well, about... I'm, no, no. You made a statement defending this, this slogan and that's the yes, conversation. I still defend it I, and I'm it's still defending it. Do, listen, it's got nothing to do with defending Israel or not. I'm telling you how people feel about it. Okay. So at what point, at what point does this statement become uh, justifiably anti-Semitic? Your position is that once Basically, uh, the government has become full-blown Nazis, or I mean, Palis uh, whatever Hamas or whoever has become full-blown Nazis. Only then will it be considered uh, to be anti-Semitic, and no, and no sooner. No, that's what you. Okay, no. so when? So when? This person's, this person's statements do not speak for Palestinians as a whole. And never has. He doesn't even fucking speak for Hamas. There are he two does. different factions or multiple factions in Hamas. There's the he civil governance branch. No, Ethan, there are literally conflicting factions within Hamas. He is the more militant faction in Lebanon. Like, I'm not even defending these guys, but at least like, like this is not a defense of Hamas in any capacity. I mean, but you have to Hamas? you have to parse through this. Of course, he speaks for one faction, is what I'm trying to say. So, so when they are different... even divided amongst themselves, when they are even divided just amongst themselves, the, then like just obviously, tell me, at what point, at what point is this phrase allowed to be offensive? When there's no. like, uh, when, <laughs> I when told there's you, I told you. Invaded? So so not you said Nazi Germany. No, I said. The level of popularity and the intentions of Palestinians have never been historically or in contemporary society to ethnically cleanse Jewish people out of Israel or ethnically cleanse Jews as a whole, right? Depending on who you talk to on the on the side of, of defending Israel or or on the side of like genuine concern, expressing genuine concern over a statement like this, it ranges control, from though. It doesn't matter what Hamas's goals is when Hamas in and of itself in this very moment has never captured a broad yes, popularity please. and is literally not, it's, it's not popular. It won't be popular. It will never be popular. There are Palestinian Christians living under Hamas. There are too many, there are too many different opinions. Oh, you're sick too. Me too. You feel okay? You think it's because your tooth hurts? Maybe we just got sick, probably. Does your throat hurt? My throat hurts. A little bit. Do you sleep good last night? Nice. You did in the night? Mm -hmm. We'll have to, um, well, we'll take it easy today and hopefully feel better. Oh, no. No fever? Okay, good. When I'm dead. When I'm done here, we'll go hang out and take it easy and feel better. Love you. Okay. Right. Here's the here. Uh, there's a couple factors to consider here. Okay, like Allahu Akbar means God is great, but for the longest time in American politics, Allahu Akbar was seen as a threat. Okay, constituted threat. A valedictorian literally said, a "One nation under Allah." in her fucking speech a couple years back and people got mad at her instead of saying one nation under God. We cannot massage our expectations in a morally righteous cause to the, the uh, to tailor the needs, to suit the needs of those who are 
ostensibly defending the maintenance of an unjust structure. I think it's ridiculous to, to concede on a, uh, on a point like this, especially as someone who takes anti-Semitism very seriously. I don't, well, think that it's, I don't think that it's appropriate. Mark Lamont Hill was literally fired from CNN a couple of years prior for saying from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free at the end of his speech at the UN. Okay. This man is a scholar. This man is a, is a, is a historian. He delivered a speech in front of the entirety of the United Nations and CNN fired him. Why did they fire him? Well, I'm assuming that you don't believe Israel has the right to exist. I don't believe Israel has a right to exist as an apartheid state. No, I don't. I, I don't believe right. that an apartheid because, state well, can continue. From the river to the sea essentially means the state of Israel is going bye-bye. The reason why I brought up the historic reference point is because in its, found, in its charter in 1960, I think it was like 1965, the PFLP that first implemented this, uh, this slogan literally said they wanted the, the Zionist entity to be dismantled so that there is a democratic secular state for all Jews living in Israel and all Palestinian Muslim Christians alike. Hold on. Who said that? Teddyfresh.com, guys. Black Friday sales going on right anyway, Sorry, now. I had to get my, I had to get my uh, uh, food. Like, what are you do you think? Do you think that? What are you a, eating? What? Uh, I just what? got chicken. My dad just made me chicken. Listen, your I, dad I, made you chicken. Yeah. Listen, 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 Sick. listen, listen. This is important. This is important. This is important. Okay. So. So. A lot of Israelis, like you also personally mentioned, right, believe that a secular singular state would mean genocide. But you also have uh, been reasonable and have come to terms with uh, the, the Israeli fears being overrepresented in this conversation. And this is the exact same conversation being played out once again. When I talk about emancipatory movements, I feature the actual people that are being wronged in this process and not the considerations of those who are defending, maybe not directly oppressing those uh, people who are, are asking for a just, uh, a, a just cause that are morally on the right side, but those who are defending those who are wronging them. I don't care oh, about the considerations well, the of, of people who defend are, Israel in that situation. The Palestinians are the ones being wronged, which I agree with. Yeah. Then, then they can't be, then they can use that phrase with, they can say, use phrases with impunity about Israel. I mean, if they said, you know, kill all the Jews, then no, of course not. That's not a, a phrase if, that they can they use with said, impunity. What if they said, um, Israel shouldn't exist? Israel shouldn't exist? Israel shouldn't exist. Uh, it depends. If they're, it depends, contextually. It, it's entirely if about... Say, it's say, entirely about it's entirely about whether or not it is contextually appropriate. It's like the fucking OK sign. Nazis use it. You know what I mean? Right. But contextually I mean, speaking, if you hit the fucking OK sign, it doesn't mean you're a Nazi. Hold on, if hold someone on. is talking about Wait. Israel cannot exist in the within the framework that it currently exists, then yes, how many people totally are talking about it say. like that though? Like I know you are, and in like your political circles and stuff, people people do talk about that. But when someone out, you know, just in the world says Israel shouldn't exist. I don't think, you know, I wouldn't assume their intentions are always uh, pure. That yeah, they're... Preci precisely why I said context is, is appropriate. Context is... Right, but in it, most contexts, context I guess. Important. No, I don't think in most context. I don't agree with that. It's like saying America doesn't... If, if you if say... America shouldn't exist in the way that it does is like, <laughs> when I say it, it's different. I'm an American citizen. When you and I can say it weight, easily... Though doesn't have any weight there's no terrorist group trying to fucking kill americans what yes there uh, wait i thought i don't i don't get it i thought hamas was crossing the fucking southern border to come and destroy america right like well i know you're not saying that yet. But... i know it is a crazy that people are saying that i agree it's absolutely fucking nuts that they yeah. think that but so, um anyway that's where the, i'm coming from the, i'm just telling you the jewish perspective that's why people don't know when they hear well, from all, the no you're not telling the me the jewish perspective you're telling me i you're am telling, i am no I Ethan, am. you can't say it's just the jewish perspective when I, i'm telling you because jews 
I know they're talking about Israel, but when Jews around the world hear someone say Israel shouldn't exist from the river to the sea, which is how it's interpreted, they see that again. I keep bringing this up. It, they see it as a genocide. Okay. Okay. Do you? And so, do you and so can can do, I ask you a question? They, and this, I'm just this, telling you. I'm just telling you. Okay, that's okay, what okay. it is. Uh, the the perspective of like uh, you know uh, like I said, it, it, it's not every single Jew or like the Jewish perspective. Jews are not a monolith. I think that it's it's uh, it, it's ridiculous to make this assertion when like again, Jews, anti-Zionist Jews, are at the forefront of of criticizing Israel and have been using these uh, have been using this term in perpetuity. And therefore, comparing them to Capos is like, I think, very inappropriate. Dude, no. My point in comparing them is to say you can find support on any movement by anybody. You know, it, no, it's just but that's not, not, but that's not a broadly, not but that's not like say, a, hey, it doesn't, that's not a tiny, I'm, minuscule percentage of the Jewish population. That's a very important percentage of, of Jewish scholars. It's a very important percentage of Israeli scholars. It's an important percentage of Jewish so people in general. You're saying that you know that there's a, large portion of jewish people around the world that say from the river to the sea not a large portion of jewish people around the world but i don't concern so how many myself i don't concern 100? myself with what jewish people think about a particular slogan when i'm talking about a particular slogan that is supposed to be when i'm giving you the historical context of where the slogan comes from not necessarily like how uh, how jewish people perceive it especially when jewish people on the on either side of this equation are a tiny like a tiny sliver of the conversation, anti-Zionist Jews do not uh, make up the broader movement. Just like, like, just like Zionist Jews do not make up the broader yeah. movement of defending Israel. It's, it's literally we're living, I I we're living on a planet where invoking that some Jews, there's Jewish people that agree with you is, is. Uh, I'm just saying I don't think it's a good argument. That's all. No, I'm simply the reason why I mentioned that is because you find if you consider you can, it to be if you sure consider you it to Arabs be an eradication that are like uh, in favor of the occupation too. No, the reason why I brought that Ethan and the reason why I think it's a disingenuous framing to compare it to the Confederate flag or to say that Jewish that, you know Jewish people uh, agreed with like Hitler or whatever is because you know a lot of these Jews who are anti-Zionist. You probably respect a lot of these Jews who are anti-Zionist. Do you think that they would actually fucking defend a phrase that unironically is is pushing for their ethnic cleansing? Do you think that that is the case? You're not I ask you in all sincerity. About a real measurable group of people. You're just using Jewish people as a token. That's not true. That's and who are these people? That's, You're talking that's, about a hundred, two hundred. I mean, what are we talking about? I'm talking here? about the tens of thousands I, I of mean, Jews here, that have been demonstrating on the streets since. And you've asked them, and you've October asked them 9th. how they feel about from the river to the sea. You've pulled them on that. There are there are literally written. Uh, there there is enough. There's so much written. Uh, 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 articles on this exact same thing, this sloganeering and what it actually means. Yes. Sure. They're the I ones mean, who are screaming sides. it. They are on the ones both. who are screaming it. Yes. Really? Show me. Show me all the Jews screaming from the river to the sea. I'd like to see a fucking video of that. Even one would actually be quite, uh, quite surprising. Find me one video of a Jewish person see screaming from the river to the sea. Okay. Go ahead. I mean, I can definitely find you a group of Palestinians or Arabs that are like, no, you, we should definitely occupy uh, Gaza. And we think what, that, that Israel is totally right. But the, what difference is that Because made? I can use them as a token, too. It doesn't mean that what Wait, they're— Wait, what? That doesn't even I make sense. That, fucking, doesn't, that doesn't even—what you just said doesn't even make sense. Why? Right here. Find me a video of a—you know what I mean? Let's see. I want to I mean, see all here, these— Here, this is from Jewish Voice for Peace Action— here, I'll send this to you as well. The full phrase is from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. If you believe that freedom for Palestinians means eradicating Jews, it then says more it, about you it. than... Let me see it before okay. you... Let me see what this, this is. is. Do you but think again, these guys are capos? It's just... It's really... Okay. Do you well, think these guys are capos? They're, they're criticizing rep, uh, Representative Debbie Wasserman, uh, Wasserman Schultz. So let's see. This, Stop trying to... Uh, this, this group, Jewish Voices for Peace Action, what do you know about this group? What do you mean? What do I know about what this you, group? This is one of the forefront. This is one of the leading advocacy movements of, of anti-Zionist Jews in this country. Alongside Jewish Voice for Peace, you also have Jews for Economic and Racial uh, Freedom. But don't you see how fucked up it is to be like, this group of people say it's not offensive, therefore the rest of you shouldn't care no, about you, it? No, you asked. You said, show me a Jew. 
And oh, I didn't dude. just... Sh no, show me a Jew screaming from the river to the sea. You showed me a tweet. I mean, on Twitter, people brigade any fucking thing. Like, this is 36,000 likes. This is, these guys are, these guys are at the tweets. forefront. These guys are at the Hold forefront on. of anti-Zionist anti protests. Of course, protest. of course there's groups, dude. Ethan, you asked me and other, I gave you an groups. answer. And now do you, you don't like the answer. Do and now you're the saying this is... majority of people retweeting that are Jewish? That doesn't change anything. You asked me Why to... Why doesn't it change you anything, asked me, You asked me for a particular... You asked me to, to literally... First of all, there's Jews in my said, chat show right me a now. Video. I said, there, show me a are, video. Not there a are tweet. Jews in my chat right now that say it all the time. Not that you care, because like clearly, when I show you not just a single Jew, like you asked, but what literally you need to an rely entire, on that argument. It's, literally, it's, an entire why, movement. Why, I don't understand still, why you rely on that argument. It's cr it's silly. You asked me. The reason no, why you, I'm mentioning is because do you think you these said, are bad people? Do you no, think no, these no. are? You brought it up. You do you think these are anti-Semitic? Do you think that these are anti-Semitic Jews? Like the people you that said, are protesting. You said there's tons of Jews that are saying this. Yes, of course. Show yeah, me anti one video of a Jewish person saying it. You sent me. You sent me a tweet. Here to protest. The you said you could find me a video. I'm gonna literally call up Noah Colwin to to have him say it. I don't care what one person says about it. I'm talking. You know what I mean? Here. But you, but you said show me a Jew. I'm showing you. A video of a Jew screaming from the river to the sea. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna call up I'm gonna call up Noah right now. I don't want to talk to Noah. I don't give a fuck about who that is. I don't know anything about him. I, I, what do you mean? I'm gonna I'm gonna call him so he can fucking scream it. <laughs> he can scream it at you. Okay, no, so you, not the uh, Orthodox you know one guy who will scream it. Therefore, uh, dude, this this argument you're making is fucking is ridiculous. What do you mean the argument because is ridiculous? That's like, saying, that's like saying if I can find a Palestinian to say the occupation is justified, then, then, um, you know, then saying the occupation is justified isn't anti-Palestinian. No, because the morality behind what he's saying is incorrect. The morality behind what, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is correct. That's the major well, difference. That's not how the Jews see it. They okay, see it now, as... But now we're having, a two, of, we're, right, now we're having two uh, separate conversations. Just, we're having no, two we're separate not. conversations. If Dude, you and I are I'm both in agreement of Palestinian you. emancipation, which you say you are, and I believe you, then why would, like, if you believe in Palestinian emancipation and you don't believe in a permanent occupation over Gaza, who gives a fuck if you can find a Palestinian that says, no, ev eviscerating Gaza is correct? Like, the conversation is not on the boundaries of, like, Jewish, Jewish people, people versus Palestinians. The conversation is on Zionism statement. versus anti-Zionism. People, the Jewish people do not interpret that as a morally just statement. I mean, obviously, that is completely subjective. Well, the reason why the reason why I mentioned uh, that that you're wrong in this, it, there are I'm sh I'm sure there are a lot of Jewish people that don't interpret it as morally just. They think that it Therefore, means like ethnic cleansing. No, you don't but care what about you're anyone supposed else? to do in that situation is not to immediately go. All right, well, Jewish people don't think this is appropriate, so. Uh, I'm gonna so go it's find not allowed. People. I'm gonna go find a group of black people say the Confederate flag isn't racist. I'm gonna go find Ethan. Please stop. Know, no, don't do that. Don't do that. You're, don't no, do that. you're being ridiculous. This no, point Ethan, is Ethan. You're absurd, making a though. conflation that However makes you look horrible. You Why don't you see this? You. It means fucking nothing. Ethan, I'm you're making a conflation you, that literally makes you look so bad. Uh, please stop doing that. Please doing what? Doing what? Stop. Stop bringing up slogans of an oppressive party. In comparison to slogans that come from the oppressed side, it is it is a false I'm conflation. You, all I'm false telling conflation. you is why people find it offensive. You don't want to hear it, and that's fine. Or you disagree. I'm telling you why people find You're, it offensive. The, they see I, it as a call for the destruction of Israel. I, I that's really, how they view I, it. I hope and again, you can understand what I'm trying to say because, like, Israelis is basically they see things through the lens of everybody wants to kill. Do you us. do you think so a black white supremacist that defends the Confederacy is akin to a Jewish person that is defending Palestinian emancipation and saying the slogan? Find, you can find anybody to agree with any I fucking know, but, point. But, that, that, that the existence of somebody agreeing with a point is not proof of any fucking thing. And there the are, suggestion that it there is are is a stupid. ton of white people who think black lives matter means fuck all whites and only black lives matter. That doesn't change the reality behind the slogan and that doesn't change the morality behind the activism. And the same goes for Palestinian emancipation. Just because people who are in defense of Israel 
okay? People who are defending Israel and its continuation of an apartheid regime because the, the opposite makes them feel like it's going to be genocidal doesn't change the reality of the slogan behind it and doesn't change the, the, the morality behind the actions. I am in support of Palestinians. I'm in support of all people living freely. I'm in support Bro, of I am security. too. Stop putting these fucking words in my mouth. Like, I don't. The way you've set that up is fucked up, and that's why people get so angry. No, I'm not putting words I'm in your mouth, but you're putting I'm, words I'm in your mouth. I'm explaining to you why people find it offensive. That's it. Here I'm not. You know what I mean? I'm telling you how people interpret that. And, and like when people double down on it and they use it and they I'm, and people it's a, it's offensive to the vast majority of Jews. I'm telling you, despite how many, to, you know, that you could fit into a room to that agree with you. I'm this telling is going you to, this is going to literally like I'm telling you, I, I don't know why you won't listen to me. I'm trying to as your friend, I'm I'm seriously urging you to reconsider your position what? because if this you are. Position. I'm I'm literally just explaining why people find it offensive. I don't, what is my position exactly that is that is a problem? What's my position? That's Your position a problem? comes along with the false conflation that the false conflation that this slogan is harmful to Jewish people. A slogan that is a, a slogan that is that. otherwise Jew not harmful Jewish to Jewish people, people can be used in an anti-Semitic fashion. A slogan Jewish that is, people believe it is harmful to them. But that doesn't change the reality of the slogan or the fact that there are plenty of Jewish people who are in support of Palestinian emancipation who use it. It's a slogan at the end of the day for a morally righteous cause. Just because, just because. But there's also fucking those, terrorists that want to kill a bunch of Jews also amongst that cause, despite it not being a lot. That's how fucking Jewish people and Israelis interpret it. I'm just telling you, dude. Okay. Whether Ethan, you agree or not, I'm just explaining it. Ethan, I, I know you're you're just explaining it, except the <laughs> Okay. You're not gonna you're not gonna convince Jewish people that um It doesn't matter. I don't care about convincing Jewish people. But first of all, I I, I, conv I care about convincing uh whoever will actually listen and, and try to understand from a charitable perspective what I'm trying to say. But ultimately, yes, I am not going to move on this position because, because people are uncomfortable by this slogan considering what the slogan actually is. There's no reason to concede. There are certain things that I find That's completely not unacceptable. There are reasons. I mean, if you like wrote, you said, if you wrote you, from the river to uses sea, it, terrorist you, groups use it. And so, like, there are reasons, whether you agree with them or not, is it? You can, I, you're and you're justified. Hamas to says disagree. free Palestine as well. Does that mean free Palestine yeah. means eradication of Jews? It's in their charter too. Um. No, it doesn't mean that. Okay, what's what's the difference then? I mean, obviously the context matters, right? Some people mean it that but way. That's Some what I said. Don't. That's what I said from the start. Right, but but well, so pre free Palestine in it doesn't suggest the destruction of Israel, which is how, again, people interpret no, it. No, that's not true. Plenty of, plenty of Jews, that I, plenty of Zionist Jews that I've, I've seen think free Palestine means the destruction of, uh, of Jews. Okay. Not just well, Israel, the entirety of the I, international Jewish population. I, I don't think that because from the river to the sea in the saying itself is people interpret it as the annihilation of Israel. That's how people see it. Okay, when you want to understand what Black Lives Matter means, do you go to white people to ask them, or do you go to black people and, and, and ask them what it means? Who do you listen to? Hey, what? When you want to understand the purpose behind a slogan, do you go and ask what, 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 what white people think about Black Lives Matter, or do you ask black people what they mean when they say Black Lives Matter? Uh, I would... Oh. When you want to understand Just the meaning behind the slogan "Black Lives point. Matter," do you yeah. ask white people what they think it means, or do you ask black people what they think it means? Um, I guess I probably, I, I would probably just ask uh, anyone involved in that movement. I don't know. Okay, that's great. Are there black people in the Black Lives Matter movement that like legitimately hate white people and like maybe want to even kill them? I'm sure there are. There's one. You can find one of everything, okay? Like, I'm sure. Does what that, you're doing, essentially, with your... Does that, does that using change? Using Jews as tokens. 
Does that change? No. Listen to my words. Does that change the broader movement and the morality behind Black Lives Matter? Or does that change what people mean when they say Black Lives Matter? Black Lives Matter doesn't... Again, it's what's in the phrase, dude. Saying white... Li or the, the thing is, like, bla saying Black Lives Matter doesn't insinuate that other lives don't matter. It's, the, it's in the fucking phrase, bro. I don't know what to tell you. From the, from river, the river to the, to the sea, sea the Palestine phrase. will be free, also doesn't feature from the river to the sea, we right. should destroy no, Israel and kill all the Jews. You're the one who's saying that that is the secondary implication behind it. I'm just telling you how people see it, bro. I know, you but disagree. if you were to tell me this is how white people feel about Black Lives Matter, I would say I don't care how white people feel in this regard because yeah, but my business Black is Lives not about Matter, explaining what this... There's my, no what I'm, inherent... Bro, there's nothing in Black Lives Matter that's saying that white lives don't matter in the fucking There's nothing slogan. in From the River to the Sea, Palestine will be free that implies Jewish people must be eradicated or Israel must be destroyed no. and Jewish people in it must people, be killed. A lot of people disagree because you're talking no. about From the River yes, to the Sea. Yes, a lot of people who are not Palestinian Israel. and a lot of right, people whatever, who are not anti-Zionist disagree. Anti-Zionists, on the other hand, don't agree. And they are the ones who are using the slogan. So why would I, I'm asking you, if I'm not going to ask a white person who is against Black Lives Matter, why would uh, what they feel about this uh, slogan? Why would I go to uh, in the broadest well, majority Zionists, both Jewish and Christian? Why would I ask them what they think about a Zionist uh, anti-Zionist slogan? I already, I already explained it, but you don't you don't want to hear me. What? No, I, I I'm asking you. Like, it's not in the the fucking slogan itself says. People interpret it as destruction of Israel. I know it doesn't say let's destroy Israel, but it's not. But that's from the river to the sea is mainland Israel. Okay, Ethan. That's it, man. That's Ethan, how people see it. I, no, I'm not, you can't. You can't simply say that's how people see it, and and it and is though. There. But it doesn't matter how how Zionists see it. What matters is how anti-Zionists speak it. Anti-Zionists of all backgrounds, just like Zionists of all backgrounds, will sometimes cynically and other times, because they're misguided, think that this spells the genocide of Jews. It does not. Can you, like, do you care that your your chat is calling me racist? Do you make any attempt to modify? To, I like, have not looked at my mo chat. Moderate at, that at I have all. not looked at my chat at all, but you have I just to opened it, but don't you have moderators? Do you care at all about what I, your audience there, says about there's me? There's 32,000 people in here right now. The reason why people are saying that is because of the conflations that you made, Ethan. That's why, like... I can't, I can't stop people from viewing you a certain way if you're going to make these comparisons that they've heard from actually racist people. You literally implied that Jewish Voice for Peace would be akin to a capo in this circumstance. Oh, you are fucking so bad faith for saying that. And fuck you for even like putting that out in the world. That was not my who point. Made this comparison. My point was that you can find anybody to defend any fucking thing. That was my point. You also made a comparison that this slogan is akin to the like the swastika changed uh, over the course of its its trajectory as a symbol for Nazi Germany and then also on top of that stated that the confederate flag means something different to the southern folk that want to uh, promote heritage not hate those people when they say that are cynically saying heritage not hate it doesn't mean slavery to me those people are in the wrong these people that are saying from the river to the sea, Palestine will be pr uh, free are not in the wrong. They're in the right. That's the major difference. They are morally righteous. And their slogan in and of itself is on the exact opposite side of what uh, the Confederacy implies. That's why a better comparison would still be to make it make a comparison to Black Lives Matter in the way that some white people foresee or, or perceive Black Lives Matter. And if I'm not going to listen to what white people who are against Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter have to say about the slogan itself, then why would I listen to people who are defending Israel on what this slogan means? Because the broader majority, the broadest majority of people who consider this to be an anti-Semitic slogan are, you, in my opinion, deploying care? it cynically. Like, do you, not you. you. Not By you. the way, I'm not even defending the... I'm not even like... I'm just, tell, I'm just trying to tell you guys how it feels. And I'm fucking shocked that you don't care that people in your chat are saying, who the fuck is this child cold, Ethan, arrogant, Ethan, kind as fuck? I love you, but there's, but there's only so much I can how do. How can you be surprised when your Discord is literally full of fucking 
Ethan, I love you, but there's only so much I can do if you're making that argument. You know that, right? Like, at a certain point, you're an adult, and the words that you're saying are going to be perceived by people in a certain way. I can't constantly tell my community to shut the fuck up, like right, well, which I have, listen, and I, I think they a, should. But in, at the end of the day, it's because I know you personally, and I think your heart is in the right place. But they don't know. So it's hard. It's hard for people to to view what you're saying you know, beyond your words. I'm just telling you the perspective. You disagree. That's it. I mean, what the okay. fuck do you want from me? Okay. But do, you, but do you get do you get where I'm coming from? Like, that's why I I'm agree. trying I to... I understand your analysis, dude. Okay. I, I understand trying, your analysis. I, want, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want my community to hurt your feelings. I don't want your feelings to be hurt. Dude, they're not hurting my I think feelings. They're fucking. I think, they're monsters. They're like psychotic. I think, no, and, I think. I think you're a good. Not person. all of them, but there are a lot of them, and you okay. don't seem to care about moderating That's it at not all. Not true. Whereas There's, if you go to if you're when you're on my show, we really do care about what people say about you on yeah. Discord and chat. Think? And we moderate it to keep like a good environment, but you don't seem to fucking care about there's it. There's no way I can you shut off my moderators? chat. I mean, I can put it in emote mode, but that's it. You not Just have like moderators? you shut off your chat. Just like you, not- you shut off your chat when these sorts of conversations happen in an effort to stop bad faith pieces of shit. We can put it in emote mode, which is what I'm doing now. But ultimately, but ultimately you have to realize like when there's 33,000 people and it's not even YouTube, it's literally fucking Twitch. So that it's even faster. It's almost impossible to moderate. Because people are going to perceive what you're saying in a certain way. This is not like, there's only so much moderation I can do if you make that comparison. Do you have moderators in your chat? I don't understand. I didn't make any fucking comparison, dude. I'm literally just explaining how people feel about it. That's all I'm fucking doing, man. And you continue to put words in my mouth, making it seem like I'm comparing them to fucking Jewish Nazis and shit. Hold on, it, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's so uh, my, fucked up. It's not my, my fair. Here. And my when you say that on. shit, then people in your chat are obviously going to co-sign it. And they're going to fucking, you know, think that, as I quoted, a Zionist fucking freak pig. I mean, you know. I don't know. For the record, I understand the analysis. Right? That it's not anti-Israel or anti-Semitic. I understand. And I agree with his analysis, actually. I do. I'm explaining why Jewish people around the world find it offensive. And I can tell you guys, most Jews do find it offensive because the way they interpret it, which is the destruction of Israel. That's how they interpret it, whether it's meant that way or not. And I think that it's worth, you know, acknowledging that that's how people feel about it. Um, you know, keep using it. By Sorry, I was, I, was, uh, I was gone. I'm, I'm I had talking to... to the audience. Can you hear me? I, okay. I'm just, t- I'm telling the audience because I don't think I can. You, you, you know why, but can I, 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 I'm, can I just... I'm, I'm just explaining to the audience that I'm, <laughs> I'm simply explaining why people interpret it to be anti-Semitic or anti-Israel because of the insinuation that it is from the river to sea, they interpret it as it being a call for the destruction of Israel. If you now you can use that phrase, and I agree with your analysis, Hassan, that it's it. You know what I mean? That people sh- can use that phrase. It's okay. You know what I mean? I'm just explaining the perspective. If you care to to you know respond to it or not, no, I, or, I get the if perspective. If you want to keep using the phrase, that's fine. You know what I, I, I mean? The, I'm just I get explaining. The that this, that I don't. I just. I don't like that people act like it's so fucking shocking that you know when when Jewish people see that and interpret it one way, it's not fair to okay. to, to make them seem like crazy Zionists. But if, if you see or interpreting it, it that way, if you see my explanation of this, and if you hear Palestinians explain this uh, term and this slogan and what it means to them and the history of the slogan, right? And and instead of going, oh wow, I didn't think about that. Actually, maybe I'm in the wrong here. I would rather listen to those who are anti-Zionist Palestinians and also uh, uh, American Jews and, and Western Jews who are anti-Zionist alike. If they all are in, uh, if they all have this kind of perspective overall, then then if you are also on the side of the emancipation of Palestinians. Don't you think that the better thing to do here would be to uh, educate people to ensure that there's not any further um, like misunderstandings on the front? Because that's the reason why I 
uh, make this uh, statement. That's the reason why I try to uh, educate people when there's a sea of of counterfactuals and counter narratives that that simply claim unconditionally that this is like anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitic people yeah, can I use disagree. this. I do. Agree. I disagree that it's unconditionally anti-Semitic. But do you understand why some people might find that a, like a scary phrase to hear? around the world I, I around do. the world but okay people good. also, but people also think i know but people also think free palestine is a scary man. phrase bro you okay so so you acknowledge that jews around the world you can understand why they would see that and can think of it as as a scary phrase to them that would make them uncomfortable yes just like just That's like it. black lives matter can be an uncomfortable phrase for people but it doesn't change my mentality around the phrase no, and if someone asks me okay whatever bro I don't what know what do you mean, whatever. Is. That's not whatever. That's very we're, important. We're just talking in circles. We've already talked about this shit. I know, but but it's important because I don't want you to think that, like, I don't want you to think that I'm, like, cynically or in a weird way, just, like, being like, no, so. anti-Semitism uh, is, like, totally fine, actually, no, with this one so, phrase. But what I, I, I don't, I just, you won't make any fucking concessions, and it's crazy. Like, what? like, I make so many fucking concessions to you all the time from my heart and I listen and I fucking try to move towards your side every time we talk and I do. But when I fucking try to tell, explain to you and you even sit here and you understand that, you know, it's why just Jewish people around the world might find that phrase uh, scary to them. You're, you're fu you won't fucking even admit. Well, now you did that I asked you, but you, you think it's fucking silly. You don't want to hear anything I have to say and you don't want to concede a single fucking point. I think that, um, and, and it's not that fun to talk to you about it when, when it's that, when it's like that. Okay. I think the, the reason why it comes across as one sided, even though it's not, it's not one sided either well, is because we're broadly in agreement, but I agree, but, but the, the, the potential fears that this might invoke uh, in people who are otherwise misguided and propagandized against this phrase by those who have a cynical reason to tie this to Judaism in general is the reason why I try to educate people on the matter, is the reason why when you and I are in disagreement, I want to explain it to you in all sincerity. I do not discount the fact that Jewish people might hear this. Otherwise, uh, good faith... Uh, and even, I guess, anti-Zionist or, or maybe critical, Jewish people who are critical of Israel, let's say, might hear this and think, oh, this, is, this seems anti-Semitic to me because I've been told it's anti-Semitic. But, uh, well, but I think making right. a concession on this and saying, you know what, you're right. Uh, some people are afraid of this slogan, so that must mean it's anti-Semitic is incorrect when, no, it's, when it's not reflective of its history. I'm asking you to understand why a large amount of Jews think that that slogan is offensive to them. I know, but just like with the one state That's solution it. conversation. That like, I'm just having. asking. I'm just trying to, like, connect a fucking bridge at all between I, understanding. I do understand it. You can, use, you can use that phrase. I'm not even disagreeing. But, like, if we're trying to actually, like, make bridges and fucking understand each other, you can't, you not being able to even concede why Jews around the world could interpret that way seems, you know, like anti, it's not productive at all. Like you, you don't want to, you don't want to fucking see it from anyone's perspective. But I, but I, but I do understand it, which is why I try to work against this counter narrative, this counterfactual. That's, that's what I'm saying. I try to use the privilege that I have, the platform that I have to deliver a voice for I understand. a group of I understand. people, a group of people that are never on that, that are never really heard at I all. I think peace and progress happens when we connect and have empathy for each other. That's it. I'm explaining to you why Jews around the world might find that offensive. And um, there's, the there's, there, there, and that's it. I think that it would be good to try to understand that. But The um, question I have is this. But I don't care to keep talking about it because we just keep talking in circles. Okay, well, here, I'll, 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 I'll tackle it from a different angle. Um, <sighs> All right. Ugh, I, I got to go soon anyway. My throat is fucking killing me. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we couldn't uh, make peace on this one issue. Um, and, and yeah, it's and I just, hope that, you know, like, it's just, I just find it really fucked up how people are going to interpret this now. And, and, and I think based on some of your analysis as me, like comparing fucking Palestinian activists to, uh, 
to like uh jewish nazis or something um you know and, and and like i'm not even fucking saying don't use the phrase i'm simply trying to explain the perspective and like you don't want if you don't want to hear the perspective if you don't want to empathize at all with people that find it offensive then then um the converse the conversing is kind of pointless i don't like i i feel like i i'm just explaining it man and you know i'm not a fucking radical jew i'm not even a religious jew no, I have no I, know. Fucking, I have no stake in the game. And this is coming from I I know. I know. Um All right. I'm here. Sorry. I just, I don't know why I get so fucking emotional lately. You all right? We don't have to, we don't have to continue if you don't want to. And you don't feel like it. Anyway, I think I think this is the reason why I originally wanted to eventually feature uh, Jewish voices in this conversation, uh, because I feel like that would be. I, I, I feel as though that would be more productive, uh, even Israeli voices, as a matter of fact, and, and we can still do that at a later date if you'd like. I just, you know. I'm not like a fucking crazy. I'm not a sensitive Jew. I never scream anti-Semitism about anything. No, I know. So like, you can't, I don't even think it's fair to characterize, like, I'm just telling you how people see it. I, I, I mean, that's I, all Ethan, I'm doing. I know, I never you said that. You disagree, clearly, that's it, and that's fine. I, I don't, Ethan, I don't, I've never said any of those things against you, and I, and I don't believe that, okay? I'm not saying that at all. I'm simply trying to describe the position of Palestinians in this matter on this front. And, You've and done that, and I understand, bro. I understand. I understand. I've listened to you, I, and I agree. That's it. Okay. Um, as far as... Uh, shit. As far as, as, far as being uh, uh, conciliatory on this front goes, I think that's, that's the reason why it'd be better served to to have this conversation not with myself but with uh with an anti-zionist uh, jewish person why does it matter if they're jewish because i'm not jewish and you've said in this conversation that like how can you tell me how to feel about the situation it's, yeah but how is one person of a uh, representative of of jews at large well, i think that they'll they'll be a they can they can talk about it from a more uh, united perspective uh, and and give you more uh give you additional uh feedback and additional information here i'm just gonna I'm this not. person said okay we don't give a fuck if they interpret it like that because they're fucking brain dead genocidal freaks it's like understanding a fucking nazi's perspective that emancipation for minorities is a threat to their existence get the fuck out of here yes so, because this is and for the record that is the perspective of someone who is not speaking about Jewish people. He's talking about Zionists. This is the difference. And, just, and the number of Christian way, Zionists far outnumber the number of Jewish Zionists how, as a whole. How are the mod, by the way, how do you honestly expect the mods to keep the discourse like in any way like civil? That was a comment left by your mod. Which mod said that? I, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm just saying. I mean, why'd you bring it up? No, it, I'm not trying to matter. snitch. Okay. But ultimately, was... you have to understand that the reason why the reason why people feel this way is because it, it, this is not like a like this community. These very same moderators, this entire moderation team, has 
been tackling anti-Semitism for you know four or five years at this point. Like Rogan they're not, says they're not Ethan anti-Semitic. Is so they're not Rogan saying this because another like, mod says Ethan is so bad faith. What have I been bad faith about? Like I genuinely don't understand that. The way that what? people perceive your com. Do you think people across the board are geared towards hating you here in this community, in my community in general? Do you think that I I don't uh, yell at them regularly and try to tell them not to uh, not to have these kinds of perspectives? I. I, I, the reason why people feel the way that they do oh, is because after a certain point... What, it, what it, have it, I said that's bad faith? I think you want me to be totally honest? Yeah. No kitty gloves. Okay. Fuck you, I bro. Think, no. That insinuation is so stupid, man. No, I, no please don't get mad at me. I'm going to be one of you. You just talk down to me the whole time? No, absolutely not. I think you're a very smart person, but you do get a little I, emotional I on this issue. I kitty gloves that's on. Tell me. Okay. I think that... What you said about the from the river to the sea being akin to a Nazi slogan, or the fact that like uh, it's a, it's a Confederate it. flag, it those comparisons because I know you personally and because I know you're an empathetic person because I don't think you're uh, a, a bad faith person at all. But anyone else that says something like that, it's going to come across, especially from the people that don't know who you are and what you represent it's going to come across like you are making a bad faith argument that Ben Shapiro would make or any number of other conservatives would make in this circumstance. Of course people feel this way because they don't see your reconciliation process. They don't see that like you go back on information and you internalize it and you think about it and you come out with an honest perspective. They only see clips of you. They will see clips of you making that comparison and and how is that bad faith? You're saying people take it out of context. That's not the same thing as being bad faith. Well, I don't think it's it's being taken out of context because you're saying this in defense of uh, bastardizing uh, the the perspective of Palestinians or minimizing the voice of Palestinians, Muslims, oh, and, and anti-Zionist Jews, anti-Zionist Jews, and and the rest of the anti-Zionist movement by by trying to. Uh, trying to say no this is what it actually means this is how it's being perceived by the other side what it actually is perceived by the other side the broader zionist movement as a whole does not change the reality of what this what this message means it is simply is used as another reason to silence any kind of emancipatory slogan and any kind of opposition people feel like they can't say anything people feel like they can't um people can't uh, uh, say people can't push for a ceasefire. The government's not listening to them. People can't even say free Palestine from the river to the sea because, like, then uh, you know this is this is technically considered anti-Semitic. Like, what what should happen? Should is there is there a boundary and a guideline that maybe I'm like not, uh, the all, ADL could put forward that people can write? I am not advocating for any speech from. So I'm just giving you my perspective. I'm not okay. saying don't say any of that shit. I'm just telling you how Jewish people around the world interpret that phrase. That's it. I think if, you were, to ask, if you were to ask anti-Zionist Jews how they interpret the slogan versus, I'm talking Zionist, about... versus Zionist Jews, the difference would be stark. So you're saying because of this group doesn't find it offensive that the other... I, I'm not saying they're right. You're because saying this group of people slogan, finds it offensive, why. therefore they're wrong? I mean, I'm just telling you how they feel. I mean, it's just feeling. Because, so. because it is an anti-Zionist slogan, that's why I think uh, it, like listening to anti-Zionists in this front certain was point, more important. And again, this is the way people hear it. At a certain point, also, what you're saying, genociding all the Jews there does become anti-Semitic. And I'm not saying that's what anybody there wants to do of course genociding all the jews is anti-semitic that's insane. that's how the, yeah. that's how people perceive it especially people in israel no but people also perceive free palestine to be the same you yourself I admit don't. that people in okay you don't but i don't i don't you, think it's the same I, people don't you, you, you it. literally said a a one state solution is untenable regardless of the morality of it because people in israel consider that to be akin to a possible genocide you openly stated that, that 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 paranoia is not a justifiable one, and yet people still feel it in their hearts. You cannot set the boundaries on an emancipatory movement by the unreasonable fears that people have about that slogan, because 
or any slogan whatsoever, because ultimately it turns into, unless, unless it's like directly violent and it's an incitement of violence, in which case, of course, unacceptable. Because at a certain point, this becomes an optics conversation that is used as a cudgel to like just fucking forcibly squash any kind of opposition. And that's already happening. In America, it's not happening. We still have some semblance of free speech. But in Europe, in, in different parts of the world, people are literally fucking getting apprehended. They're getting detained for saying from the river to the sea. Uh, so, so in my opinion, having this back and forth in, in good faith and, and having a conversation about it is fine. But that doesn't even change the reality or even uh, uh, break through the dam of, of the sea of people that are demanding a ceasefire, that want to stop the occupation, that want to end the apartheid that uh, has currently in this iteration, in this last iteration, in the siege, has killed almost 11,000 people with 4,000 children. Bro, don't and bring I know that up you, as some I know fucking you don't talking think point against me. No, again, I know you don't anyways, agree with I don't that. I know you don't that. agree with that. I know you don't agree with that. I know. I, I'm not saying you do at all. I know you don't agree with that. And that's precisely why right, I'm listen, saying just listen. listen to the Palestinians in this, in this front. Okay, I'm listening to the Palestinians. And anti-Zionist Jews. And anti-Zionist Jews. Anyway, I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't want to fight. I think this is like... I mean, it, it sucks, and I'm I'm sorry that I I made you feel a certain way. I'm sorry it's, that my community you know, made you feel a certain like, way. No, it's fucked up. It, I don't want you to. I think you're a good person. Just understand that people don't know uh, the empathy that you have, and they simply see, you know, similar talking points that they've heard from other others that don't demonstrate that same empathy that you do when you're delivering their perspective here. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to have a conversation about it. I'm just trying to be honest and open and like, you know. I agree. I, I respect it, which is why I wanted to have this conversation to begin with. I hope you don't think that I'm like, uh, you know, harboring resentment or, or trying to get my fucking community to hate you. I'm working in the exact opposite direction. Well, I don't think your mods have a very vested interest in uh, aligning their goals with yours. I'll talk to them about it as well. But ultimately, there's a reason, and that is because they've heard this this sentiment expressed by others, and they don't know you. Here's personally. another mod. C Max says you're just showing your Zionist Ethan. There's another one saying shrug dog. I don't care about your feelings. Which is fair. Yeah, I'm not taking it back. Says Fish. Uh, uh, Frogan said, uh, I don't forget what she said that I'm a Zionist or something like that. Um. The talking I'm points that you've demonstrated, to the talking that that you've demonstrated come across like you are in defense of, of Israel. And they are identical to the talking points that those who support Israel put forward. When did I defend Israel? But I know you're not. I know. When? I, no, when? You said it can be. When? No, I. You're, you're misunderstanding what I'm saying. I know you're not. I know you personally. I know what you represent. I know the values that you represent. I know that you're empathetic. The talking points that you bring forward, however, are identical Which, to the same talking points that I literally spend the entire day dissecting. Oh, that's, that's the difference. That's why people see that and they automatically, uh, automatically ascribe bad faith, uh, uh, you know, bad faith to what you're saying. Like what though? What's a talking point that Ben? Sh you'd hear Ben Shapiro say. Uh, where do I begin? Um, I think that the the from the river to the sea conversation, every single thing that you've brought up, I've heard from. Uh, I mean, if I pulled up a Ben Shapiro video right now, he'd probably say identical things. Right, and on that one, on I'm just saying, as a member of the Jewish community at large, and myself being a moderate, fucking secular, non-religious, unsensitive to a not like desensitized to anti-Semitism for being on the internet so long, like. I'm just giving you the perspective. You disagree with it, and that's fine. But you can't argue about how people feel. You know, it's an no, emotional, I, I know. Less an emotional thing. I know. That's I, what it I, is. I, I, and I'm not even trying to argue about how people feel. I'm saying I, I'm not trying to argue about how people feel. I'm trying to explain what the, what, the historical, uh, what the historical background of that sentiment is and how it's being oftentimes so what, what else other than that? What else other than that? 
It's mostly that. I, I know like, Ben Shapiro says that. Listen, I'm just telling you the perspective. What else did I say that would um I think uh, I don't know. I haven't I haven't watched a lot of your uh a, a lot of your your takes. Like I well, I today, genuinely don't know. You said today, that today is just the river to the sea thing uh, for okay. sure. That's it. You made but it sound like that, today in that, conversation. I, think, like, I was echoing all kinds of talking points that suggest that I'm defending Israel. Wait, and I don't I remember. Doing I didn't say that. that. I'm talking specifically about river to the sea thing. But as far as like um, as far as like a two state solution goes, I think you're uh, or a one state solution goes. Like even having that conversation alone implies that you're not a Zionist. So I don't know why. Dude, uh, I literally conceded to you that the one state may might make no, more sense. I know, sense. Ethan. I know. Like, I'm I'm fuck, I'm man. telling you that I don't I don't feel that way anyway. I don't. I'm not coming from it from that perspective at all. I'm also eating now. I'm just letting you know. But yeah, I can see it's fine. All right, I got. I do have to go. I mean, I don't know what was the. I don't know if this was productive or anything really at all. My sense of this is that I'm gonna probably deeply regret having this conversation but uh that's what it is ethan i love you i wanted to talk to you beforehand um so we can just like have a more productive outline um uh, for it for a conversation like this i'm not i mean this I'm not is what i wanted like... to talk about what no this is what i wanted to talk about it's no fine. i know i just <sighs> like i like look as a, as a final statement on this for everyone that's watching Ethan is not a bad person he's not a Zionist he is, um, he is delivering the perspective of, of a person that has lived in Israel yelling at Ethan is not going to be productive in this situation or uh, appropriate in this situation don't, and don't you more, think it's like if you're, if you're trying to reconcile between two different groups of people don't you even if one group is wrong let's say do you think it's at least even a little important to try to understand their perspective? 100%. No, okay. I, I do. Uh, I, so I, talk about, I talk about the importance of really building a broad... I talk about the importance of building a broad movement all the time. And in order to engage in coalition building, you have to be conciliatory, you have to be understanding, you have to be empathetic, lead by empathy. Like If, the, if you want to call me Israel defending, that's, I'm like the most milk toast fucking pro-israel defender you can possibly find so like you gotta learn you people need to learn to build a fucking bridge somewhere i'm, and like, I'm not saying that i hope you understand i don't I know I don't. yeah you're not saying it but i do think that a large part of your community thinks that as uh, clearly reflected by by all the shit that the mods continue to say and so i think it stems from i think i it's, just got a air i just got a fucking air force ad yeah i just ran an ad um, right. I forgot to run it at the top of the hour. All right, listen. Um, let me just clarify. Israel's wrong. The settlements should be removed. Netanyahu's a war criminal. I fucking hate him and his whole cabinet. They're genocidal. Absolute psychopaths. Fucking despise them. I think the Palestinian people, I think the blockade needs to be lifted. I think there needs to be, I think that Israel is indiscriminately bombing Gaza. I think that um, that whatever, with this indiscriminate bombing of Gaza is fucking horrific and horrible and absolutely destroys Israel's position. I, I, I don't know what more I can do to, uh, to, to, to try to empathize um, as, as someone who is, who's an Israeli. I don't know. And so that, those are my positions. If I try to explain a perspective of, of a Jewish or Israeli person, I'm not endorsing it. I'm not defending it. I'm only saying it because I think it's important for people to understand the perspectives of, of those on the other side of them so that you can connect with them better. What's, that's, that's it. That's my goal. And, what, is, um, what, is your, what could um, the pro-Palestinian side do better? I think that's a good question to ask you. Like As far as... As far well, as its I, own advocacy, I don't mean this like cynically. I'm, no, I'll, I'm answer, like, I'll answer it. I don't, again, I, I hate to speak so broadly about the whole movement, but in general, I've seen, and what I'm seeing now is just like a really vitriol, um, um, uh, toler like there's zero empathy or tolerance or, or, 
desire to hear the perspective that I'm doing. And so much so, there, there's not only a lack of empathy, there's a downright um, and outright uh, hatred for it. I mean, they, I feel like a lot of people can't differentiate between like real Zionist, propagandist, psychotic fucking freaks and then someone like me who's a, you know, secular, modern, fucking unreligious uh, and concerned Jewish person, Israeli, that's concerned about what's happening to the Palestinian people. And so I don't, I think that people, uh, again, I can't speak to the whole movement at Broad, but I can talk about what I'm seeing in your community with your mods and such, is that there's such a quick, um, it's so quick to condemnation, it's so quick to interpret the worst faith possible. There's no charitability. And I understand because tensions are high, people are ups rightfully upset about what's happening. I mean, that's to put it mildly, right? As you said, I mean, 10,000 people died, 6,000 of them are kids, or maybe even more, 8,000, I don't know. But <laughs> there has to be, if there's not even tolerance for someone with my perspective, then I genuinely don't think that there's ever going to be a chance of anyone reconciling this in a meaningful way. I just, I just I think, think it's counterproductive to look at me like uh, the fucking villain and to call me a Zionist and to interpret what I'm saying as someone who, who's no different than, you know, your run-of-the-mill uh, militant fucking fundamentalist uh, settler or uh, fanatic in Israel. I agree. I think that um, I, I think that people are too quick to jump to conclusions, especially because of the prevalence of certain talking points that they hear that they immediately go, oh, he, it seems like he's defending Israel. In the same way that people look at me and say, oh, you're, you don't care. You love Hamas. Like, you must love Hamas. It's very obvious that you love Hamas over and over again, um, despite the, the endless condemnations that I yeah. deliver. I feel that and in talk my... about the the brutality of it. It's just people are very black and white on the internet, and they want to put you in a a <clears throat> neatly defined box that says you believe this, and I think that you believe this, and you're sneakily and cynically and uh, uh, you know talking against this other position. Um, I will not listen to what you have to say. I simply am going to. Uh, perceive you a certain way and go along with it. I obviously disagree with that. That's why I try to uh, break through that on a regular basis. I try to instill charitability in my audience as well when talking to people. And um, that's... I do uh, think, though, in general, like, I, I agree with what you're saying about yourself. I know that all that about you. But I do think, like, on the whole, that your community is extremely hostile towards me uh or maybe not i don't know i don't know how what's that's the percentage not, not i mean how, how I could i how could of, i tell no, there's there's plenty of fans but i feel of like they're, they're overly uh, there are plenty of fans of yours in this community i think that yeah they're... yeah no i don't know what's the percentage but like it's very i don't know i feel like very unwelcomed and maybe it's going back to the fucking discord that i know you you don't log in there but like it's just um, no not only not only do i uh uh, don't regularly go in there. I've literally moderated it, but also on top of that, I've told the mods to like, um, I've told the mods to, to, uh, to deal with it. The thing is now that you've said like, uh, uh, I don't know. I just like, uh, everyone is going to going forward from this point on, um, there are going to be people that like, regularly uh, will take clips that you've uh, you've had on this broadcast and use it against you and say that you have a certain position and continue fucking bullying you, which I disavow and I disagree with, and I think it's fucking bullshit, and I've said it time and time again, you know this. And then also on the other side, people are going to be eating good and being like, see, Hassan and his community fucking despise Ethan. Like, when you said that about Discord, uh, when you said that about Discord, uh, my, my Discord and my community... 
Everybody went along with it. The worst pieces of shit that you and I both fucking despise, like all those fucking little, uh, little weirdos on Twitter, like the likes of Ian Miles wrong and shit, you know, quartering, like they all fucking went along with it. And we're like, Hassan's community are fucking anti-Semitic and they all fucking hate Ethan and they're all woke and they hate Ethan. And I, I, I hate that shit. I despise it. Like they, whenever you and I have a back and forth like this, they eat so good and I despise it. Like they're probably going to use this as well. Constantly fucking driving a rift and constantly moving away from like having a charitable conversation and have, uh, having an important feel that, back and forth. I do feel, and people say, oh, you're wrong. Well, that's why. I do feel like if I was to take a snippet from our Discord, it would be so positive and so nice and so supportive of you, even when they disagree. Whereas if I look at your community's responses, some of the stuff I'm saying, they're super fucking, and maybe maybe they're justified because of what's happening in Gaza right now, but it's just so negative and so hateful and so nasty and so uncharitable and so mean-spirited that... Um, mm-hmm. That, that it, it just makes me feel unwelcome. And it makes me feel like sometimes that this, what we're doing here is kind of pointless. But I, I admire everything that you do and I support everything that you do. And um, it's also, it, I don't, it's, I, don't I, think it's, I think it says also because it's a, it's a political, it's a political community, which is fucking cancerous and awful in general, especially like this morning. I talked about walking my dog. I was 10 minutes into the broadcast. And the first thing I saw in the fucking chat was, oh, so no more BDS against Starbucks, I guess? Because I said I got a puppuccino for my dog. I never said I went to Starbucks. I never said anything. For the past fucking four, for, for the past four weeks, almost five weeks now, I have continuously talked about what is going on in Gaza. And yet there were still people who are mentally ill and fucking bad faith who were like, oh, I guess you went to Starbucks and purchased all the Starbucks you possibly could, and that must mean you hate the BDS movement. That must mean you hate Palestinians in general. So this shit happens to me all the fucking time, too. It's part and parcel of, like, being, unfortunately, in the political realm, especially when it's, like, an environment that is ultimately very emotional, that people, uh, you know, people do the two awful worst things you could do. It's We're marrying parasocial a- attitudes that are already unhealthy with... Uh, political perspectives that people get like incredibly polarized on and incredibly impassionate about. So obviously, obviously no matter what happens, like if you look at this kind of stuff and it let you, let you uh, let the kind of stuff sway your opinion, it's going to destroy you mentally. It's just something that I mean, listen, I'm, sucks I've been, that like, I, I have I've to deal with the internet always. so fucking long, dude. I'm impervious for the most part. I would thought into this shit, you know, but this stuff that's happening here really, you know, how did I know what it, on I me. know what it is? It's it's getting yelled at by those you uh, perceive as your allies. Happens to me all the fucking time too. You recall this happened during the the you bought a house saga when you and I had this conversation. Okay, can you, me, you, can you I, hear me? What? I can hear you. What's going on? Text from you said, "Can you hear me?" That's weird. I guess no, no, no. Old. That's old. Also, uh, don't show your phone on your camera. Yeah. Um, Anyway, no, remember, I do when I bought a house, go. last thing I want to say, remember yeah. when we, remember when I bought a house and everybody fucking lost their minds or when I bought a car and everybody lost their fucking minds, the people that were yelling at me in that situation were not right wingers. I mean, sure. There were right wingers that were yelling at me and taking advantage of the situation too. It was mostly fucking people with hammer and sickles in their fucking bios on Twitter. That didn't change my perspective, and it didn't change my uh, opinion on the world, and it didn't change my analysis one bit. Because ultimately, you have to remember, like, a lot of that comes from a place of anger, resentment, frustration in their own personal lives. You just have to keep learning and keep going on this journey, be as charitable as you possibly can to others, and, and lead by empathy. There are going to be people who you perceive as allies who will yell at you, and it's going to hurt your fucking soul. And it has happened to me more than anyone on this planet, okay? It's coming from a place of powerlessness. It's also coming from a place of, like, access, where they think they have access to you, where they know you will hear what they have to say, 
and you will respond to it and it'll make him what, feel good. What about like, when all those people saying that are your mods? I mean, that seems more personal. It's the exact same principle behind that as well. It's the exact same principle of like people perceiving what you're saying without knowing your background, without knowing what you believe. Like my mods aren't like these are these are not people I'm I'm uh you know seeing personally every single day, Ethan. There are they are uh, fans are all the same. Right? They don't know well, you. They don't know they don't know the conversations. Okay, listen, I do have to go. I do have to go. What I'll say is this. I have always admired what you do, and I have always supported what you do, and I will continue to do that. And uh, uh, I think that um, you can – that's it. I don't know. And you can save from the river to the sea. Uh, you can say free Palestine. No, I – Okay. Do all that shit. It's not. I don't think that it's inherently anti-Semitic to say those things. To be clear, I don't think that fucking uh, Jewish people that are anti-Zionist are fucking Nazi sympathizers. Okay. I don't. I don't think you. I, I, I don't, don't think, think you that. Said, uh, I don't think you believe that. I. I know. I'm. I'm saying. I don't think that uh, Confederate uh, that. Jews who are anti-Zionist are Confederate supporters. I am. I am anti. I'm not a Zionist, so I'm not sure where that comes from. Oh, I know people are saying it, but in short, I support you. I've always uh, respected what you do, and uh, I will continue to do that. And um, that's it. Is Ethan please, drunk? Please. No, I'm just sick and tired. Okay. Well, before we go, please, please don't read shit online. People are going to be fucking ruthless knowing full well that you read it, and it pisses you off, and it hurts your feelings. That's why people are doing really? it for the most I mean, part. Yeah. Anyone who thinks that, like, taking you down a notch or a peg is going to, like, somehow be productive or somehow win anything uh, and, and call you a Zionist and yell at you uh, is is wrong. They're wrong. They're in the wrong. They do not... They're not thinking about this. They're just simply selfishly trying to yell at you, just like people selfishly try to yell at me all the fucking time because it, it, it's, a, it's a mechanism of, like, releasing stress, especially it's, in an incredibly stressful environment. Yeah. We, as online, we, in the online arena, as e-celebrities, shitty e-celebrities, are always going to uh, be punching bags, okay? So don't read any of that shit. Don't. Not good. Yeah. It's not ref it's not reflective of anything other than people's own personal perspectives. And I say this as not only your friend, but also as someone who's looking at it even from the outside, okay? <sighs> Listen, I want to say uh to everyone watching in chat that I appreciate you guys' perspective. I love you guys and uh thanks for watching and I hope that you know anything I said doesn't come off uh <laughs>